Welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by McDonald's. We're in Daytona Beach, Florida. For this MEAC matchup on the home side, Bethune-Cookman looking to go 2-0 in conference play, while Morgan State comes down from Maryland looking for win number one for new head coach Tyrone Wheatley. Hello again, everybody, with Jay Walker. I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you very much for joining us. Jay, I see this matchup today as the known versus the unknown of the quarterback position. So we'll start with what we know. With Bethune-Cookman, Akevius Williams has become one of the most balanced quarterbacks in the MEAC. And what I know is he is now the best dual threat quarterback in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. The senior leadership has showed up for head coach Terry Sims. This offense goes as far as Williams can take them. He makes great decisions throwing the football and he makes smarter decisions in the run pass option game. You have to slow him down and not let his legs beat you if you want to have a chance at slowing down the Wildcat offense. And yeah, Bethune picked up a nice win on the road at Bison Stadium against Howard a week ago and Williams had a lot to do with that. Nearly 300, actually exactly 300 total offensive yards and three rush touchdowns versus Howard and giving Bethune that first conference win. All right, now let's get to the unknown. Morgan State struggling a little bit this year. And what is the old expression? If you say you have two quarterbacks, you don't really have one. Today, <laughs> we're going to see two quarterbacks. And I, that's the key. I mean, the numbers are there. You show me an offense that doesn't have a solid lead at the quarterback position, I'll show you Morgan State. There's a reason why they only average 13 points per game. Neither one of these young men have stepped up to assume the quarterback position to make the job easier on head coach Tyrone Wheatley. But I'll give him some advice. If you really want to have a chance to get that position, find Manashaw Bailey. Not only can Bailey make the catches in, in between traffic, but take a look at this. Over 21 yards per catch. If I'm a quarterback, I'm force-feeding him the football and asking him to help me win the quarterback job to give us a chance to get in a road victory upset down here in Daytona. Well, college football fans are very familiar with the name Tyrone Wheatley. He was an outstanding running back in Ann Arbor for University of Michigan and has had a pro career both as a player and as a coach. And all of a sudden, he takes the chance at Morgan State. And it's been a little rough at first, but he's got a lot of work to do to get this Bears program where they want it to be. On the other side, we've got Terry Sims in his fifth season at Bethune. 30 wins, 18 defeats. You know, one of the things that will stand out, we talk about Tyrone Wheatley being winless. One thing about Morgan State, they have played the toughest non-conference schedule of any HBCU. You know, games against Army, games against James Madison. They haven't been able to take a break, so we want to see how good they can truly be once they start getting into conference play. Jordan Cofield awaits the kick from Bethune. It's their first home game of the season. And the weather here is just gorgeous. Mid-80s, not a lot of humidity, believe it or not, for East Central Florida. And a bit of a breeze. We're not that far, maybe 15, 20-minute drive from the beach. Uh, you're from Florida, so you're used to I it, am. and I'm not. It's hot. <laughs> this is actually field, it a couple of degrees cooler than I thought it was going to be in the mid-80s. I'm dead serious. Short kick, and Cofield will pick it up over the shoulder catch with the tamp. And out to about the 23-yard line. So we'll take a look. We're not even sure which of these two quarterbacks is going to be the first one out, if it'll be Harris or Golat. Harris, number six. And looks like he's going to get the first opportunity. A senior from Washington, Georgia. We see his numbers last season. He played nine games. This season, he's completing about 55% of his passes and has thrown six interceptions against three touchdowns. And it's a friendly quarterback, as the coach described it to us. And I give credit to Harris, the senior. He must be playing at a higher level than he has in previous years because normally you go with the younger, with the quarterbacks that's got more eligibility. But Harris has been trying to hold on to this job. Yeah, Josh Chase is the setback, and he will rip a first down gain right away. Gain of a dozen for Josh Chase, the senior from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, who's been averaging only .8 a carry in the early part of the season. He's took care of that. Make that an 11-yard gain to the 34. So throw those numbers out. We're in conference play now. Yeah. They played the tough non-conference schedule. Now Coach really wants to see is this going to translate into regular conference games. First flag of the day from our crew. Offense, number 58, five-yard penalty, first down. So a Tuatasi, Marvin Tuatasi, a freshman from American Samoa, they're 58, guilty of that. So it's going to be first down, 15. Back to the ground. This time, oh, bouncing away. 
That looked like it was going to be nothing, and Chase, on his own, gets out to the 38-yard line for a gain of nine before Vernon Walker put him down. Fantastic individual effort by Josh Chase there. It looked like he was bottled up but did a good job spinning on the outside. See, last week they had some success rushing the football. 215 yards over 200 yards rushing in that game there. And Chase is a big reason why. Chase is out to Jabrell Johnson and Bethune ate that play up. That's going to be a loss of a yard and sets up third and long. Alertly done there. Henry Miller the second over there for Bethune. And this is where we want to ask one of the questions. Obvious passing situation. I want to see early how do they defend Marcus Ford, number 48 defensive end for Bethune Cookman. Top of your screen. He's that guy that gets pressure at stand-up linebacker position coming off the edge. Watch for 13 for Morgan State. That's Bailey, who Jay talked about in the open. And flushed into the pressure. And this is going to be a loss of another yard, so it's going to be time to punt after the initial first down of the first play. Harris took off but ran right into the center of the Bethune defense. And, and that's a strength. The front seven for Bethune-Cookman, one of the best units in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, and they got pressure and forced the quarterback Harris to scramble. He couldn't get away. Yeah, Jerome Howard, a junior from Sarasota, on the other side of the state. Take a look at Nicholas O'Shea out of Detroit, kicking to Tyree Spain. O'Shea handles the hunting and place kicking sophomore for Oregon State. <laughs> Wobble on this one. Spain. Thought he made a fair catch to him. But he's going to get this return out to about the 35 yard line. I thought I saw a right arm move, but the official did not blow the play dead. So he gets out to the 35 yard line, a 41 yard punt with an 11 yard return. And we'll get our first look at Akevius Williams and the Bethune offense. Williams is the guy I think today the key is going to be his legs. Morgan State does not defend the run. Let me repeat that. Morgan State does not play run defense. <laughs> they give up 317 yards rushing per game. And I think that Bethune Cookman is going to try and take advantage of it, become more physical. So I think we'll see a lot of Williams' legs in the running game, in which he can do his most damage. And watch for number 34 to Isaac Washington, their sophomore tailback out of Cape Coral. He's in there now. Play action fake to him, and of course they come on throw. That's a dangerous little throw. Sort could have lobbed away from trouble. It'll be second down and ten coming up. Offensive coordinator Alan Sue were trying to be fancy and trying to change it up when not establishing control of the line of scrimmage on the first play against a defense that's pretty poor against the run. After an incompletion on first down, playing behind the sticks here on second down. Or that either tells me that he's got the confidence enough in his run game that he can take them out on second and ten and not worry about it and see if that's the case. And no game there. So it'll be third down and ten. Ian McBurrow and Malachi Washington, the two outstanding tacklers for this Bears defense. With the stop, no game. And they come from the linebacker position and the secondary position. McBurrow and Washington, two good ones. Morgan's playing a 3-4 type defense, and they bring down that fifth defensive back for run support. To the ground. This time it's going to be Williams on the zone read. He will not get anywhere close to the first down, but Burrow, who is uh, along with Rico Kennedy, the lead, two leading tacklers for this Bears defense. So a quick three and out for Bethune. Good job by a team that has had a hard time stopping folks at Morgan State. And that's what happens when you have incomplete passes on first down. You end up putting yourself behind the sticks. As a quarterback, your number one job is if, quarter, if the coach calls a pass on first down, you need that completion to get it going. They came up with the incompletion, and as you mentioned, Morgan State comes up with an early stop. Now, Wes Wolfolk, standing at the 20-yard line, is averaging an 11 yards per punt return. So Bryce Coward, a junior, has put eight punts inside the 20. A lot of spin on this. And Wolfolk muffed it, got it back. Very fortunate there weren't any Bethune players around. Wolfuck just could not find it and ends up falling on it. And so Morgan State's second possession coming up.
and forefathers lie. These are my people. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's and in part by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. So with Jay Walker, Dave Lamont, and our ESPN crew right here in the city of Daytona Stadium, home to Bethune-Cookman, finally at home. And a series meeting, Bethune leads this 23-8. to So you've got Johnson and Chase as... The setbacks for Morgan State. Bethune won a thriller last season. They've won seven in a row. I think 2009 is the last time Morgan State has picked up a win in the series. Little dump off here to Johnson. He's going to be hit and thrown after about a one-yard gain. That was to Darius Peters, number 21, with a solid job. Great job of pursuit from that linebacker position. Devin James able to track down the ball carrying open space. And one watch thing, for him, 31. And one thing Bethune Cookman always brings every year, speed. Now, how tough they're going to be is always going to be the question mark. But they can always run from sideline to sideline. Right up the gut to the 40-yard line, a short gain for the freshman out of Baltimore Johnson. So we're looking after a three-yard pickup. They're going to need about five on third down. And it's that opportunity where you're DeAndre Harris. You have an opportunity to, to emerge, to say that, hey, I'm that quarterback that can keep picking up first down and move the ball down the field. As a quarterback, you earn your money on third down. Let's see what the senior can come up. Down the middle, and it's dropped. That's an absolute first down. If Deontay White can hang on to the ball, but he can't, and it will be time undoubtedly to punt again. That's a heartbreaker for the Bears. Yeah, and this is a good job by the offensive line up front. Plenty, plenty of time, and that's a ball you just have to make that catch. You're a imagine, college wide receiver. That's a perfect thrown ball. Imagine if you're Harris. You throw a good ball, you got a guy <laughs> wide open, you're fighting for your job. Yeah. And then you get a bad break like that. Because at the end of the day, it shows up as three plays and out in completion on third down when it clearly was not Harris's fault. Everybody did their job except for the wide receiver, White. So Spain awaits the punt. Had a good return the last time. Big pressure. Flags all over the field. Spain will somehow hang on to that ball. I have no idea. But the flags came out very quickly. And it's going to be holding as the preliminary signal from our referee, Jason Soisman. And the holding would be against Morgan State. So an interesting decision here for Bethune. Make him kick it again and possibly get even better field position after only a 28-yard punt. And if they make him kick it again, it would be because they came so close to blocking this punt. You see they had two bodies around there. I think had they gone the old-fashioned way and laid out and come across his body, they probably would have gotten it. Prior to the kick, holding. Kicking team number four. 10-yard penalty, replay fourth down. I don't think that's a dumb idea at all. I think uh, particularly since that kick was kind of shaky, that... Uh, O'Shea will have to try to come up with a better one. And it is a bit breezy here. It looks like at the moment the breeze is in favor of Bethune. See if Morgan State makes the adjustment and shores up their pump protection. Because I'm assuming that Bethune Cookman is going to come hard and heavy again. Well, they, look, they certainly look like it, don't they? Nope, they lay off this time. Line drive. And this time, Spain just could not get a gauge of where this was going to go. And the field position is actually worse. They lost five yards on that exchange. <laughs> It'll be the thick ball of the 27th when he returned to Daytona. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Looking for our first points of the game, Bethune Cookman. Those guys are not playing in this one. They are either red shirts or injured sitting this one out, but able to watch the home opener for Bethune. And the last couple of years, Bethune Jay has found a way, one way or the other, to take care of business against Morgan State. And I think that's more in terms of taking what Morgan State's given them. There was one year where Morgan State was very aggressive and blitzing all the time, and that's a year where you couldn't really run the football, and then they found a way to take advantage with the pass as well. So I still think this version 
It's going to be the running game between Cook going to make a difference. Now, this will be Quayshawn Bird, and he is going nowhere and in a hurry. In fact, he's going to lose yards. There is the leading tackler, Rico Kennedy, leading tackler for Morgan State, and one of the best in the conference. Six and a half tackles for a loss, now seven and a half tackles for a loss. Yeah, and sellout blitz. What they're doing, sellout blitz, bringing their linebackers and their safety, secondary positions. Everybody just surround the line of scrimmage. So in this case here, if you're Alan Suber, you've got to make that adjustment. Maybe I'd agree with him, soften them up on first down with maybe a screen or something when they're selling out to stop the run. Pressure. There's a little flip out pass. This is Burr. He's got some room. 35 40. Burr outside the 40 yard line before he is brought down by Carl Garns. But that's a big gain of 18 yards and a first down. I talked about just a little screen pass or a swing pass when somebody's trying to pack the box to stop the run. Look at all those jerseys in there. Get somebody out in open space. Good downfield block by this veteran offensive line. And a good job of finding the crease by Burr. Pressure, look out, quarterback gets hit, the pass is almost intercepted, or is it? What's the ruling on the field? Yes, it is an interception by Kennedy, a remarkable play. Pressure came from the right side of the quarterback. He was hit just about the time he threw it. Kennedy got a piece of that and somehow made a diving grab at the 40. Well, we're going to be taking a look at this one, Multiple I'm sure, times. <laughs> in yes. terms of whether or not this is an interception. They do have a replay booth here take a look at make sure it's a catch or not the headlinesman was the closest official to the play and he made the ruling of interception <laughs> even if it's not this is an unbelievable play it gets hit Balls. and I don't see the referee even on the headset right now so there's been no call. And now I think he's going to finally get the call. The previous play of an interception is under further review. So that's the right move to make. Again, the ruling is interception and Morgan State ball at the Wildcats 40-yard line. So we will see what they are looking at in the booth. You see the pressure. Kennedy with the tip. I guess yeah. the issue is, Jay, if his hands were under the ball, that's a catch. And I want to see from that angle there, the ball was spinning around. Was it spinning around on the turf or was it on his forearm? Well, remember, he deflects it he deflects the first it, time. So that's going to change the, direct, the trajectory, right? No. To be honest, I don't know if there's enough there to overturn that. And as you mentioned, that was an outstanding play. Oh, it's a great get play. A hand no on the ball, what? one hand, while he was engaged with the defense, offensive lineman, able to get that hand in the air, get the deflection, and then the wherewithal to discover the football and make the interception. And what's interesting is Morgan State is taking Bethune out of the idea of running the football because they're not having great success at the moment on the ground as we thought they might. And this is the best look we have available. So watch for his hands. There you see the See it spinning? And then I'm looking right here. I see, think that's a catch. I don't see how you can overturn. Let me put it through that way. Interception is confirmed. Okay. Morgan State ball. First down. It didn't even go to stand. They went right to confirm yep. with that one. So Rico Kennedy with a spectacular play. His first interception. Morgan State came into this game minus seven in turnovers. So they now are minus six, and they have the best break of either team so far in our first quarter, with DeAndre Harris remaining the quarterback, and Lavelle Williams, a freshman of American Heritage in South Florida, at the tailback spot. Take the deep shot. See, this is one of those things where I would go deep. You got the turnover. I'm getting the ball to Bailey. Well, Williams gets three instead. Well, we haven't seen Bailey yet. Number 13, and obviously the focus of the film room this week for Bethune's defense, coordinated by Charles Jones. And hey, if you get him one on one on the outside, I'm taking a chance. I mean, look how much respect they're giving him up top. That's a 12 yard cushion from the defensive back at the top. There's a shot right down the seam. First down. Fumble! Fumble. Bethune gets the ball back. Gravett fumbled the football. And it's going to be Henry Miller, the second, who picks it up. And Morgan State had the biggest break of the game, and they give it right back two plays later. 
Offenses that only average 13 points a game make those type of mistakes. You get a great defensive play, you have the ball, and this is a nice read by DeAndre Harris, the quarterback. Puts it on the money, but doesn't secure the ball. It comes out, big play by the Wildcat defense. Now it was Devontae Lawrence, number 26, with the hit on the football. Xavier Gravette has to hold on to that football. Nice job running the route, but when you see contact coming, make sure the ball is secure. Can't DeAndre Harris <laughs> just can't catch a break? I like that. The yeah. Wildcat change. That is attractive. I mean, it is Florida. They're going to have that bling down here. Of course. You're not know. just confined to South Miami. <laughs> That's that looks sweet. great, actually. Yeah. i got to admit, that looks fantastic. So Isaac Washington back in the tailback position. And Bethune trying to get their run game established. Washington breaking one tackle, falling forward. Now he put the ball down, but was he down? Now Morgan State says it's their ball, but I'm looking at the umpire, and I believe he's ruled him down. The runner was down on the ground, second down. That's a five yard pickup. I think this is the right call. Yeah. Yes, no question about it. Had control of the football, went down the ground, doesn't cause that type of fumble. No, even if you're rooting for Morgan State, you have to admit <laughs> that was a fumble. But you see that? They ran the football on first down. Now you've got mm -hmm. second and five. Well, I think the replay booth wants another look. Who on the field of the runner being down is under further review. I don't think this is going to last very long. My gut tells me that this will be uh, confirmed. And I think at the time he went down, he wasn't even being touched by a defender. No, he had broken the tackle, and uh, looked like he may have had the turf monster get him. So referee Soisman will head over and get on a headset to confirm or overturn the call. I'll give you a little known history fact. Okay. On the FCF's level, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference was the first conference to institute instant replay. All their televised games, they did it before the rest of the nation caught on it. Lens and four, that, that should be a simple one there. And the umpire's right there to call it. Man, that's a great look right there. I think you can see he's already elbowed down here. We're finished. Further review. Roll through the field is confirmed. The runner was down. Second down. What are your thoughts about instant replay? I would love to see uh, a time limit on it uh, because they're looking at. And by the time you you watched a game at home, right? When you're when you're having a chance to relax a little bit, you've already pretty much made up your mind in 45 seconds or a minute. It, that's all you need is maybe two minutes, and then if you cannot figure it out in two minutes, the call has to stand. Because we're never not going to have instant replay again. It's because the people will go crazy, the fans will lose their minds the next time there's a bad call in a big game. False start, offense number 13, five-yard penalty, second down. See, the football player me is like, just get the call right. The you first know, time. You, no, know, you know how hard no, it is to plan to score a touchdown or to get an interception. So if it takes you five minutes to get right what I've been working on for 20 hours during the work no, week I to do that, yeah. get it right. So I just keep thinking of the flow of the game. I think of the fans yeah. sitting in the stands who can't, you know, who don't have the technology. And the players. In the meantime, Bethune pops on the play wide open with Washington. And this time he gets into Morgan State territory. Down to the 45-yard line before Marquise Thorns trips him up. It's a 25-yard pickup. And good job. Force feeding the run. And, you know, those numbers show up. You know, Morgan State has trouble defending the run. And look at that huge hole there that Washington is able to explode through. And he knew where to go with that, too. This time it's going to be Williams on the keeper, and he might get a yard. He didn't really fool the Bears' defense that time. Second down coming up, under six minutes remaining in our opening quarter. Now, twice in this game, we've seen number two for Morgan State, Carl Garns, make some touchdown-saving tackles, right? He plays cornerback, and he has 22 tackles on the season. He's the third leading tackler on this football team, and he plays cornerback, mm -hmm. Dave. 
Got so a lot of corners stick their nose in. I give them a lot of credit for the hustle to go chase down folks, but you don't want your cornerback making that many tackles. You've got to do a better job with your front seven. We had movement. It was actually Malachi Washington. Who false moved, start, offense he, number 70. They ruled that penalty. he didn't cause a false second start. Down. So back him up, second and 15. And Javon Camp Villalobos telling his team, hey, relax, guys. We had too many penalties last week against Howard. And it's hard to win a game, and they did with that many mistakes. Penalties. And, and penalties at Bethune Cookman football, it's always been a common theme. They've always been aggressive and they play physical. Uh, one of the things that Coach Sims has tried to do since he's been the head coach is reduce the number of penalties. He realizes we're an aggressive football team. We're going to get penalized, but the mental mistakes is what he's working on. William throwing left under heat. That's going to be almost in the stands on that one. Trying to get it to Kalen Humphrey. So third down and 15 coming up. Tell you what, if Morgan State can continue to make this game kind of ugly with no flow or rhythm into it and stick around, things can happen. A little surprised that Bethune has not come out here and tried to force their will against them early. Well, they get, they get the big run second, and then they get the they lose five yards on the penalty. There, and I doubt they're going to run the ball. Certainly, this empty set indicates unless it's a quarterback draw or something here. Williams, and he is going to take off, and he might have a chance here. He does. That'll be a first down. Key downfield block. That time thrown by Humphrey and Williams on the what appeared to be a design run gets 22 down to the 28 yard line and keeps that drive moving. And, and take a look at what you see. Watch the penetration come from this side, but look how quickly Williams recognizes, uh oh, my right tackle got beat. I'm out of here. Makes a quick decision, then becomes a running back, hurts you with his legs, and picks up the first down to keep the drive going. Ladarian well, Wilson is the tailback now, number 27 for the Wildcats. He gets it, fights off a tackle, cannot fight off two more though, and actually loses a yard. Unless they're going to say he got to the line of scrimmage. Rico Kennedy and Carl Garns, who you mentioned, come in on the stop. No game. No game, but, but you have to keep doing that. When you're trying to establish your run of the football, every now and then the defense is going to get it. But if you keep running the football against this Morgan State defense, they've shown that they will crack. So I would not abandon the run, although Morgan did a good job on that play. I'd make them prove that they can do it again. Can't do it this time. Wilson had one to beat and a saving tackle stopped him at the 15 yard line. And another good job of recognition by Williams. Run, he can either keep it or hand it off. He sees number 27 come down and focus too hard on the quarterback, gives the ball to Wilson, and Wilson picks up huge yardage. Staying on the ground and to the ground after, I think this time, a loss of a yard. Tackle made by Rich Pierre, just a redshirt freshman out of Hamilton, New Jersey. If they're generous, I think they did take a yard off his total there. Second and long. And something that I'm noticing, they have a lot of experience on the offensive line for Bethune Cookman, but they're getting beat at point of attack. We've seen a couple white jerseys make it easily into the backfield of Bethune Cookman. Williams under some pressure, hit. Lobs it up, and it's going to be swatted away. Third down and long. Once again, pass protection up front forces him to throw this ball early. Very lucky it was not intercepted, but they are having trouble. Watch the white jerseys, particularly over here on this side, getting beat one-on-one. -on -one. If you get beat one-on-one -on -one matchup, you're going to get your quarterback hit. You're getting them lit up. And every time we've seen it, we've seen those white jerseys manage to get in the backfield and force Arkevious Williams to get hit or throw the ball early. That was Cameron Chesley that time, number 12, who got in. Now Isaac Washington is back in a tailback here, third down. They're going to call it 10 to go. Williams struggling early, 1 of 5 for 18 yards and an interception by Kennedy. Williams wants to run, has nowhere to go. He got belted. Chesley, number 12, again with another big play. Washington was in there as well, and that's a loss back to the 21. It goes back to the play before when he got hit. He felt the footstep. This is a blitz coming, but this is a great job by the running back of picking it up. But he sees a collision. He's taking off. There was a little bit of a pocket there. I thought he made up his mind to leave too early. In that situation, I'd have rather seen him throw the ball away than take a sack. 
39 yards out for the freshman from Lehigh Acres, Xavier McDonald. Out of the hold of Jabari Dunham. And we have our first points of this afternoon in this BIAC battle with Bethune getting on the board against Morgan State. We'll see that the Bears can counter will be returned. Machine. A little celebration for the Bethune band as their side takes a 3 nothing lead on the long field goal by McDonald, 39 yards out. But Morgan State, you kind of mentioned this, Jay, has kind of bucked this game up a little bit and made it a little bit ugly. And the, the uglier they can make it, they can hang around and give them a chance for a big play to maybe Get something going offensively. Have a little bio on the Morgan State and Baltimore or Baltimore or Charm City, depending on what you want to call it. And it needs to get a little bit more hyped up, not a little bio. How about a big bio for Morgan State University, <laughs> located in Baltimore, Maryland, over 7,500 students, magnificent marching machines, the band, and Will Lanier. Yeah, and that's a player. Hall right of Fame. And Earl, Ooh. see, I like Earl Grave Sr. I'm about the money. Yes, C you are. CEO Black Enterprise. That's good listening to that right there. And that kickoff will stay in bounds. It'll be a touchback out in the 25-yard line. It was hooking, and it could have been a penalty against Bethune. So let's see. We've seen nothing but DeAndre Harris. We were warned by the Morgan State coaches to expect DJ Golot Jr. to play some, but it certainly looks like Harris is going to come back out with the offense. And to Harris's credit, he's played well. Mm -hmm. His supporting cast has let him down. Drop passes, makes a nice completion in the fumble. So... I give credit to offensive coordinator Travis Menger for sticking with DeAndre Harris right now. He's played pretty well. Now you got to get the rest of the offense to get involved. However, they still have not targeted Bailey. No, they haven't. Not even tried. Josh Chase is the tailback. And he'll get it. And a hole pops open for him again. And this is the, basically the first play of the game all over again. Only a longer gain of 15 before Walker and Peters from the secondary had to come up and bring Chase down. And they found some good running from Joshua Chase. He's done a good job. I think the focus has been on Jabril Johnson, but Chase, the senior from Archbishop Spalding, doing a good job finding some creases. 35 yards and three carries for the senior from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Receiver wasn't ready, or maybe the quarterback was. Jeremiah Jones, a freshman, was the intended receiver, and he was not expecting the football. Yeah, that, that's a freshman mistake there. That was a hot route right away, and he kind of was a little bit lackadaisical getting to that flat. When you're a quarterback and you've got a linebacker coming off the edge in your face, you're taught get rid of the football quickly. A minute 31 left in this quarter. It's Chase. Again, he finds a hole. And it's almost eight yards. Maybe they will give him eight. Ontario Johnson with the stop, the linebacker from Jonestown, Mississippi. We talk about finding the crease, and this is what I think we've seen Chase do a good job of, finding the crease. You see this ball, he's handed off. He can go all the way outside, but watch his vision when he's looking, 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 crease, and then he cuts up right away in a hurry. So good job of going against the grain, finding some daylight. They gave him seven, third down and three. Pressure coming from Bethune's defense, and Chase will fight, and he will get that first down with the extra effort. He was stood up by the Bethune defense, but he got six out of it, and the chains are being moved. You see that run there? We call that toting the rock. That's how you tote the <laughs> rock right there. You're going to see the same play they call going across. This time, he wants to bounce outside. Uh-oh, they set him up. Cornerback comes up for the hit. Would not be denied as after contact was able to pick up the first down. Good hard running by Joshua Chase. And we have a whistle, and with 22.3 seconds left in this quarter, we have a timeout. Morgan State, the first charge timeout. Take it by seconds. Morgan State. Well, we've got a number 10 theme going for you here next Saturday night in Death Valley. Top 10 SEC, SEC showdown with Florida taking on LSU at Tiger Stadium. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. In the last 20 years, it's 10-10 between these two rivals. Who is LSU? I don't recognize it. 
It's like, are they did they join the Big 12 or something? Because they're like airing it out. It's interesting because you had LSU and Michigan who promised two different approaches offensively, and one is working spectacularly yeah. well. <laughs> and Michigan still does not have an offensive identity. Now, they won today, yep. but it was their defense that carried them against Iowa. And, and I'm still curious if you can play that style of football in the SEC, just airing it out all over the place. I think against you those, can. Against those defensive linemen well, you're going to see on a weekly basis. It, it, it's going to start getting tougher for LSU. They beat Utah State today. Well, not a bad Utah State team at all. To the ground they go again. What might be the final play of this opening quarter. And Judas McKenzie bent it back after a gain of four. And I think if you're Morgan State trailing 3 nothing, bit of a victory for you. And that should be the end of quarter number one with Morgan State in Bethune territory. They're not going to have far to go to flip this football around. One quarter down here in this BNAC matchup. Bethune's home opener. And the Wildcats are in front, but not in charge. We take a look at MEAC standings here in North Carolina A&T, and that's Bethune's next opponent, by the way. Uh, both those teams 1-0, Florida A&M, NC Central. Excuse me, NC Central is the playing next game. Bethune, that's right. That's on the Thursday, next game. I'll Howard, be there for that one. 1-1. Uh, one one. Tough day today, though, for Howard on the road in Cambridge, Mass. We're, we're an academic institution. Two of them. That's, what, that's what you say whenever, whenever you don't win football games. Yes, <laughs> but the academic. problem is you can't, but you played another academic institution. <laughs> and they, and, and Howard it is a great academic institution. There's no yeah, doubt but, about it. But this thing is shaping up between what everybody predicted. North yeah. Carolina A&T and Bethune-Cookman. Preseason polls, they were expected to finish one and two. But I think the bigger challenge becomes how do you knock off North Carolina A&T, who is the hottest HBCU in the country, and they play some good football there. There's a sideline warning on Tyrone Wheatley. <laughs> uh, whatever the warning, kind of... it's a good time to get off the field right now. <laughs> I'd, I'd step back. I wouldn't yeah. be in that box of gray area. Yeah, because the next time it's going to cost him real estate. And so the headlines would just take care of a little... Trying to get the markers square. I have it as second down in about five. And they've got to get to the 48. Yep, that's right. So we're all good. And this is taking a little longer than you'd expect it to, but. They're getting the ball at the 40 to the 50. The chains were not quite right to the satisfaction of the linesman. So now it's now they've got a second and seven, and that's not right. There we go. So they need to get it. There you go. That's it. To the 48. That makes sense. Sometimes I just want to tell them it's not rocket science. No, um, and I don't know what could have happened during the end of the quarter that would have caused them to lose their focus, but they briefly did, and now they're back. Maybe it was the change of ends that uh, caused this problem. So we're now ready. they got to get to the 38-yard line. It'll be second down at about five. And there for the first time is Bailey. And they made it easy that time. All he basically had to do was turn around and catch the football. And that'll be six yards and a first down for the Bears. And you saw a little bit of display of that explosive 4-3, 4-4 four, four, four speed that Bailey possesses. Nice frame, 6-1, 200 pounds. He caught that pass and accelerated up the field quickly. Now back to the ground. That's not going very far for Williams. Maybe a yard before Judas McKenzie, number 92, there in the maroon, stuffed him. And that's that play they're trying to run off tackle, which you saw from Williams there. He tried to hit it in there rather than use the running style that Joshua Chase brought with the nice vision waiting for a lane to open. Johnson is the setback at the top of an eye formation. He'll get it. 
he'll get another yard, and that's going to be it. One more time, the middle of the defense. That time, Jerome Howard, number 96, stuffed it. So here comes a passing down, apparently, at third and eight. I, I was at a loss for words during that play. When's the last time we've seen a quarterback under center in college football? <laughs> Came under right. center, threw me for a loop, and they tried to do the counter, but tough job running there. Jerome Howard, the best of the defensive linemen, interior defensive linemen for Bethune-Cookman. That is number 44, Jamarcus Reeves, a junior out of Miami, who was shaken up on the play. He was on all fours for them for a moment and then collapsed to that position. And with all that wash and all that traffic he was involved in, he might have got caught. He will step aside. 13.43 left in this half events and exclusive originals sign up today at espnplus.com so we take a look at jamarcus reeves shaking up on the plate the athletic training staff looking at him while his teammates have a third down and eight on the defensive side morgan state perhaps in two down territory Although they do have the wind to benefit Nicholas O'Shea, but of a breeze going from right to left on your device, we go to third and eight here. And could be third and 13. Full start offense, and number 75. Five-yard penalty, third down. So Morgan State, one for three on first downs. That's the center, Dexter Carr, Jr., a freshman starting at center. You know when that happens, when the center is offside? Everybody else is slow. He forgot the snap count. <laughs> so it was on two. He heard one flinched and then snapped the ball. But it's those little mistakes right there that Coach Whitley's going to have to clean up for this offensive unit for Morgan State to become a threat. That's the time. Going to go for it all right here. Big fight down the field for the possession. Flags are coming in. And that should be interference against Bethune Cookman. He was trying to hit Jordan Cofield. It looked like he was being held. Pass interference. Defense number 36. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Cofield, normally the return man for Morgan State University, running right down the seam. Just a speed route. Turn him around. I mean, See there, he's just letting it go. And, ooh. Yeah, it's Devontae Lawrence. He originally said 36, then changed it to 26. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. This is Chase, who's running well. That's his sixth carry. He's over 50 yards for the day already. And I like Chase. That's why I know they're doing a little bit of running back rotation. But right now, Chase has the hot hand. He's had successful runs. And even when the hole wasn't there, He's running with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. I continue to feed him. Game's five there. You got one-on-one -on, -one on the bottom with Bailey if you want to take it. You, you asked for a hot hand. You got it. Chase has a first down. He's gained 11 yards on two carries. Gets it to the 14. You saw the stat that Morgan State has not been good in the red zone. And they are going to get another shot at it right here. And good job by Chase. You see the senior running back. Running hard with a chip on the shoulder. Holding. Yeah, this place is coming back. And although Joshua Chase, and he knows it, the slumped shoulders say it all. The officials had their flags out almost immediately, and it looks like the tight end, Daniel Velez, and he's getting a quick coaching lesson. Holding. Offense for 86. 10-yard penalty. Replay, first down. You know, the risk you run when you run off tackle or outside that tight end is once he bounces to the outside, so you'll actually see him here with good leverage here, but then he gets stuck. Oh, Turns yeah. him around, grabs everything. What a face mask he grabbed there. So he will stay in the game, but wipe out the touchdown. And now Johnson, number 30, is the tailback. Keep it for the quarterback this time. Harris 
will turn into the defense and get almost all the penalty yards back. That's a solid pickup of nine before Miller and McNeil make the stop for Bethune Cookman. So Morgan State definitely threatening with second down at about 11. This is that time of field where I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a defensive coordinator Yogi Jones dial up a blitz trying to see if he can get Morgan State out of field goal range. Well, they go to the ground with Johnson. He gets popped at the 11-yard line. Gain of four there. Ontario Johnson brings down Jabrell Johnson. And now you've got an interesting call here, Jay. He's third. Looks like you got about six. Well, we've seen Harris make good decisions with the football. It's a matter of can you get the supporting cast to step up. I don't think you're going to be able to run this football for the first down. See if he can find a one-on-one -on -one matchup that he wants to take advantage of. He gives it to Chase. That's the matchup he wants to take advantage of. Chase will get to about the 13, excuse me, inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. And that's not going to make it, so the field goal team will trot out. A little bit of a safe call there. You got third and six. You're trying to take the lead, I'm assuming, and you call a draw play to your running back. Well, you did say he had a hot hand. Yeah, hot, yeah but that's on first and second down. <laughs> third down, I need the hottest hand. Here's the play. Who handles the punting and was place kick to knock the game up. This will be from 25. And we are even. 10 to 37 remaining. Morgan State has countered. These are my people. And that last Morgan State drive went 14 plays, 75 yards. Jay, they've held Bethune Cookman to 83 total yards on 16 plays. So this is the Bears defense that has risen up after a tough start to their season. Their reputation had taken a bit of a hit. And so far, they've looked very sharp, and they have not allowed Bethune to really establish any kind of serious rhythm on the offensive end. And, and I don't know if Bethune Cookman came in here with the mindset that we're going to force the run down your throat. I think they're giving them a little bit too much respect in their run defense. I would have continued to hammer home the running game, and it seems like whenever Bethune Cookman got away from that, Morgan State was able to capitalize and end the drive. Well, that kickoff was caught out of bounds at the 11-yard line. That is going to be an illegal participation if indeed his foot was out of bounds. Let's see. coming up. My mistake for getting into the rule book too deep. Uh, instead, they went with a simple call there to the 35-yard line. Bethune will get it. We take a look at the a little bit more about this university. We are in Daytona Beach. Enrollment just a hair over 4,000. The great marching Wildcats we saw before the game. And that is an interesting mix of notable alumni, to say the least. Yeah, I, mean, I think Rasheen Mathis and Larry Little, probably the two greatest football players in the history of the school. But I got to give a shout out to Alvin White. Alvin White was the sharpest dressed football coach in America when he coached here. Called him Shine, and he was a really good football player. Yeah, I think they're going to review this because I, I was curious. I wasn't. I was wondering on that kickoff, did he catch it and then step out of bounds? Well, that's what I thought too. And you can catch it, step out of bounds. You yes, just don't mark can. the ball where you went out of bounds, and the. the error might have been catching it in the first place. Yes, because it was going out of bounds clearly. Right, so I, that's why I was a little bit confused by the the call on the field. So let's all take a look at it, see what the booth is seeing. He catches it. Yeah, he's out of bounds. He, he's he out of bounds. It. And he catches it, so I think regardless how you see it, Bethune Cookman's not going to get the ball in the 35-yard line. I would be surprised. Sort this out and I think Terry Sims, I think he's starting to emerge as one of the better coaches within this conference, mm -hmm. considering the fact that they didn't win all the championships that they had gotten used to under the Brian Jenkins era, but it's always a little bit tough replacing somebody that has such success. 
But the Wildcats, even though they've been down years, I think a lot of teams will take sharing for part of the conference title in mm-hmm. like the last four out of five years. You know, maybe not winning the whole thing, but they've definitely been one of the elite programs in the conference. Well, this is going to be an interesting review coming up. The call of the field is a kick out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Here comes the official ruling. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver was out of bounds when he first touched the ball. First down. All right, so it doesn't matter if you catch it out of bounds. And it's going to be at the 35-yard line. So the call on the field stands. That was close. Oh, that's, that foot is going out of bounds, yeah. but that one foot seemed like, whew. But they called it a catch if he were... If he were inbounds, yes. And he didn't make a fair catch. So, so Bethune to the ground with Bird. And Bird will get to the 38-yard line. It'll be second down and long coming up as Bethune continues to try to establish the run. But that's okay. I mean, there was a big hole there, but it was a nice uh, slip to get in there. But that's okay. First down picking up three yards on first down. If you start to gain control of the line of scrimmage, that's what it's going to have to take. Those type of runs where you just wear down the defense. Quick pass over the middle, a dart thrown to Jimmy Robinson. That'll be a first down to the 47-yard line. Jimmy Robinson, special player, one of the most exciting players in FCS football. NFL talent with the speed and his ability in the special teams department. And this time coming in from the side was Malachi Washington from the Grizzly position to force a loss of a couple of yards there. Second down and 12 coming up. Washington looked like he was in the backfield. They had missed block by the tight end, Teron Mallard. It was a good block and tight end, but he absolutely just whiffed on his block of Malachi Washington. It results in a tackle for a loss. Back to the ground. And what balance! Unbelievable run here by Bird. And he's finally brought down the 35 yard line by Marquise Thorns. Quay Sean Bird, a junior from Palm Coast, Florida, with tremendous balance. I mean, the balance was here, but I like how he used his size to get small. Watch him get little. He's going to go underneath the arm tackle attempt by Ian McBurrow. And then you mentioned the balance to stay up and make the run longer. 20-yard pickup, and they come right to the throwing game, and it's going to be knocked down by Simeon Gatling in the safety position. He was playing up that time, and he read that play beautifully. Did you see? I don't know if I've seen that before, that previous run by Bird. He ran underneath the shoulder tackle. I see guys low. go over other people, you know, jump yeah. over them, but go under them go like, under. A, like a drawbridge, <laughs> which we have a lot of in Florida. Under a lot of pressure, got a key block. This is Robinson. He is dynamic. Robinson going to be hauled down. He's not going to be hauled down. The jersey tackle wasn't enough, but back at the 33-yard line, there's a penalty marker down. This may come all the way back. I told you Jimmy was exciting, didn't he? You were right. That burst there was something to see. However, it's coming back. Holding. Offense, number 35, 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. Uh, that's Aaron Thompson hit with that flag. Now they've changed that to number 70. Now you get 70 and 35 confused. They don't oh, know. Wow. But no, yeah, there it look is. At that. Yeah. yeah. And I call that a pretty good block at first, but I didn't see the takedown Let him go. Part. Yeah. After the initial <laughs> contact, just let him go, but yeah. That's the uh, the correct call by the officials by far. So instead of first and goal, it's going to be second and 20. Clock at 8.25 and running. Williams goes underneath. And Jonathan Thomas looked like that play was going to be worth more than it was, but he got tripped up after a gain of only two. So third down and 18. What do you drop in the playbook here? They normally like to find their tight end down the seam. Mallard. He hasn't caught one yet. 
pocket collapsing, and they're not going to get anything out of this. Rico Kennedy with a sack. Two and a half sacks for the Fort Lauderdale native. And it's going to be punt time for Bryce Coward. Good job by the defense. They call that bend but don't break. They gave up a couple big runs, but in the end, and they had to make a play, took advantage of the mistake on the penalty from Bethune Cookman, and you'll see the pocket just absolutely collapsed. And it goes back to what we said earlier. We've seen them win one on one matchups throughout this game on the line of scrimmage and pass protection problems. Wolf Funk around the 10 yard line. Got a very bright sky here, too. So this is always a challenge for a punt returner. Win against the punter here. Look out. Thought that was going to be blocked. This is a pretty good kick. Actually, a great kick from Coward. And Bethune will down it at the two. They almost didn't know they had it, but Jamari Laguerre found it just in time. But what a punt by the junior from Hobart. So it's a long way to go for Morgan State to get in front. In the meantime, Rico Kennedy continues to play really well for the Bears. And a new day will break. Yes, these are my people. Well, Morgan State has had their chances in this football game, but the quarterback not getting any help. He's misused a drop pass there on third down. Big completion down the field, but fumbled the football at the end. And the worst kind you have right here, holding, taking points off of the board, a touchdown run that was for not because of a holding penalty. That's why the Bears have to settle with only having three points. Well, the start of the show, we talked about a two-quarterback system today for Morgan State. It has not materialized. DeAndre Harris played pretty well. Not his fault that that touchdown was taken off the board that Jay just referenced. So he has stayed in all the way for the Bears at Tyrone Wheatley. He's got Josh Chase standing in the end zone after the great punt by Coward and Chase running up the gut. Maybe a yard. That's going to be about it. And this is what a difference maker can be. You know that Bethune Cookman would love to bring a kitchen sink blitz. Mm -hmm. Go after him and try and get the safety. However, because of number 13 on the field, <laughs> Bailey, watch when they break the huddle. Because when you blitz, you have to play man-to-man -man coverage. And they are not going to cover Menashe Bailey one-on-one. -on -one. You see the secondary safety that they've got there? Two people over there for him. Back to Chase. Another hard-earned yard to the four. Third down and eight. And that time Ontario Johnson, number 12, in there for the Wildcats. Well, the clock coming down to six minutes in this half. Surprised at 3-3, Jay? Very much surprised. And I think Terry Sims is, and Bethune Cookman is disappointed this game is 3-3. But you respect the conference and what they do. But I just think the difference has been... Bethune Cookman has not eliminated hope yet from Morgan State. When you've got a team that's struggling and they're coming in your place, the sooner you can eliminate hope of an upset, the easier your job becomes. But in this case, they have not done it. From the end zone, trouble here for Harris. Gets rid of it. Complete 20 yard line. Xavier Gravette, that's a first down for the Bears. And Harris made that happen with his legs first, then his arm. And what a great play by DeAndre Harris at the quarterback position. Initial read is not there. Keeps his vision downfield with burgundy jerseys in his face and throws a strike to Gravette for the first down. Huge play. It gets him out of trouble. They've got the wind at their backs. If they do have to punt, it'll be a little bit easier for Nicholas O'Shea. In the meantime, it's Chase trying to get to the edge. He will get about four there. Good job by Chase. He had a defender on his back. Miller and Walker will get credit for the tackle there, but that's a solid four-yard pickup, it looks like. He is running that football. Yep. I mean, and you don't see a lot of holes right there, but look at the vision. It set it up in the straight arm. He knows when to turn it on, gets the angle. I mean, that's a, that's a boring run in the stat sheet. Only four yards, but... That's tremendous effort. They gave him five, actually. They marked him out of the 25-yard line. Morgan State has had success on the ground, primarily because of Chase. Got to get rid of it. Uh, Overthrown. He, he had him. 
the intended receiver that time, Jordan Cofield. Yeah, and you have to hit this one. I mean, the protection was there as they were rushing through it, the play pass comes across a formation. He's open for a long time. He just waits too long before he decides to throw the football to a wide open Jordan Cofield. So 40% on third downs for Morgan State. Third and five here. Harris going to try to make something happen with his legs. What a tackle. That's a First down saving tackle by Marquise Hendricks stopped him a couple of yards short after a three yard pickup It'll be fourth and two And if Hendricks doesn't execute that tackle, it's a first down for Harris Part of that linebacking core of Hendricks and Devin James and Ontario Johnson arguably the best in the conference and Great job of tracking him down coming off the block That's really good considering the fact he had to disengage from the offensive lineman leave his feet and make the First down saving tackle. Spain awaits this kick around the 40 yard line. He's had an adventure trying to find the football today, so we'll see what happens with the kick from Nicholas O'Shea. Real wobbler, fair catch, and that's the smart move with everybody coming down his neck. Good field position for Bethune Cookman. They've got all their timeouts and 319 left in this half. We proudly bring you more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine. What on earth? Well, it's football season. Oh, yeah. My, my, my. Well, I can fabulous. taste the monitor right there. Yeah, well, guess what? Guess what else we got for you? Deep fried bacon. I want some. Yeah, you know, I, I have to admit, somebody in the truck had some. And I do say had because I doubt that it's there oh, anymore. Oh, man. I got to try that. How about that? There's more. Some deep fried bacon. No, that's yeah. not bacon. No, that's too thick. No, to be. Oh, what, I, what, what, what is that? Sugar? That is powdered sugar, probably a little maple syrup, and the rumor is that it's deep fried peanut butter and jelly. Oh, okay. so I'm going to take off, and you got the rest of this, and I might bring some back to you. So on the ground, Akevius Williams breaks free. Williams, he'll score. Akevius Williams takes it the distance. 60. Four yards for Akevius Williams and a stunning touchdown for Bethune Cookman. I, I hate to tell you I know the game of football, but didn't I tell you Williams was going to be more effective with his legs you and his arms right. this game? You were right, because up until then, Bethune Cookman had 81 rushing yards on 15 carries. Big seal block there from Mallard. Yeah, and then the missed tackle by the freshman, number 29, Bruce Maddox, takes a poor angle. And Williams makes him pay right there. That angle was too aggressive, becomes a foot race. He sizes him up, and Kevious Williams says, Jay, I, you do know what you're talking about. I'm going to run this ball, and that's the huge play for this offense. Well, he had struggled in the passing game. Three of eight for 29 yards and an interception. So he goes 64 to the house here, and Bethune opens up a seven-point lead. You can kick off your Week 5 NFL Sunday with a countdown crew on ESPN and the ESPN app at 10 a.m. Eastern. Randy Moss ranks this week's best college football catches. I would throw the interception out here from Kennedy as one of those. Plus how Duke alum Daniel Jones has become the new king of New York and the legend of Cowboys linebacker Lake Van Der Esch, as well as the early breaking stories, injury updates, and each game previewed right up until kickoff, 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. So a kickoff coming up, and Morgan State facing a little adversity. After that long run, Jordan Cofield awaits the kickoff. He'll get a chance. Cofield. Oh, there was a momentary gap there for him, and he has tripped up, falls forward to the 30-yard line. Let's go back to that touchdown there and how it was set up. And we criticized Teron Mal the tight end earlier for not doing his job, but I'm going to give him credit. Watch him come all the way across the formation, get to that second-level guy, and seal him off, putting him in a bind where he's got to make a decision. He comes across, gets to the second level, gets in the way, and once Williams sees that, 
takes off for the big touchdown run. It wasn't a pancake block, but it was knowing your assignment, your responsibility by Maller that allowed Williams for the touchdown run. And it wasn't a hold either, which we've already had one touchdown for Morgan State taken off. Now Harris, a little aggressive on that pass for Bailey. Second to ten coming up, exactly three minutes remaining in the half. Don't go wrong with getting targets towards Bailey. Taking the underneath stuff, and if you start, can hit one or two of those short passes, it'll open up the deep ball that you know Bailey can go get. And it's Bailey again, but they're all over him. He breaks a tackle, but he can't break all of them. And that's going to end up being a three-yard gain. And Don Johnson, the fourth, number 37, finally brought him down. But they're starting to target Bailey a little bit more aggressively. Yeah, and they're getting creative. They're starting to move Bailey around in the formation. Before, he was lined up just in isolation situation where they were doubling him. But now they're starting to put him in bunch formations, trip formations. Only two catches. Him in. Yeah, see, I like this. Bring him in closer to the line of scrimmage where he becomes more of a threat. Bailey, two catches, nine yards. They're going to need more. Pass is blocked and bounces around. So excellent pressure that time. Tony Bowman, 91, got a hand on that. And that's going to be. And that was a com completed pass. Number 76, yes. <laughs> Allen Jones. Cop the deflection for a loss, but offensive <laughs> lineman going to be in the stat sheet for a catch. Let's watch his first and perhaps last college catch. Uh, you know, he gets beat, and then he turns around looking for the ball. Then Bailey's almost going to catch it. Then watch him grab it out of the air. That's smart play. You don't want the guys in the other colors to get it. So, yeah, Tyree Spain, will he try to run this one back? That's a good kick. This is really ripped by O'Shea. Spain back to his 20. He is going to try. Makes a couple miss. Makes another couple miss. And gets taken down at the 43-yard line. What a great run back by Tyree Spain, who's averaging 19 yards per punt return. Picked up 21 there. Now you want to say he almost outkicked his coverage. But you see, great job of setting up the block. Good job of not blocking in the back. Catches a crease, turns on the speed, and... Who's returning? It's, it's ugly this game's gotten. You have to give credit for Bethune Cookman getting the stop. And now they have an opportunity to really end this half with some momentum. So they have all three of their timeouts. We see how they've beaten Morgan State the last two seasons. Right now, the, they are tilted toward the rush yards following the 64 yard run for the score by Kevius Williams. He'll come out throwing. Can't find anybody, though. And he'll try to make something out of it and wisely protects himself by running out of bounds. But that's going to be a loss of a couple of yards. And I want to see Bethune finish out this half. I mean, you've got a game that's been 3-3 most of the first half. You get the ball back. You want to expand that lead. Finish it off strong where that way they go into the locker room a little bit down. And crucial that you start picking up any type of positive yards on first down. Whenever they don't give positive yards on first down, Bad things tend to happen. And that pass skipped. Incomplete. It'll be third down and 12. The intended receiver there, Daryl Powell Jr. I mean, that, that's on Williams. Yeah. That was an open wide receiver. That was just a poor pass right there. The passing numbers haven't been there for him. And what you have to do sometimes as a quarterback is the coach can call a pass, but you're telling yourself as you drop back, unless the guy comes wide open, I'm looking for a running lane. And when you got wheels like that. So let's see with the call. How aggressive is Alan Suber going to be the offensive coordinator here on third and 12? Pressure, blitz, picked up nicely, but the pass not on target. The intended receiver was Jimmy Robinson, who had gone in motion. And Simeon Gatling was all over him. So the best thing for Morgan State, not only did they get the ball back, they didn't have to use any of their two remaining timeouts. So with a minute and eight to go, if they get decent field position, they can become the aggressors. And again, kicking into a bit of a breeze. 
will be Bryce Coward. Now, his last punt was magnificent, went to the two-yard line. But I don't know if he's going to be able to do that again. Wolfolk around the 23, 22-yard line awaiting this one. Shanked it. Yeah, he did. Let's see where the official ends up marking this. He's got a long way to run where he's going to judge it. It went out of bounds. It's caught around the 38-yard line. This doesn't mean that's where it went. He's still going to the 40. So if you're Morgan State, what an opportunity. Two timeouts. You've got 63 seconds left. And after a 19-yard punt, you stay with DeAndre Harris, who's quarterback the entire half of Morgan State. Let's see what their offensive coordinator, Travis Menger, does. Uh, I'm playing aggressively here. I mean, the oh, defense yeah. made the stop. I'm, I'm coming off. Stepping on the gas pedal, trying to score. I haven't for the first time. I don't see Bailey on the field. They're big threat wide receiver. Josh Chase is the setback. He's played a great first half. On the delay, it's Chase. He'll get about six to the 46 yard line. James and Howard on the stop. And timeout going to have to be taken here, I assume, by timeout, Morgan State. Morgan State their second time out of the half, Smell timeout. something? Please reset the game Look behind you. Seconds. You are a powerful man, Jay Walker. Oh, my. Seriously? You are a powerful man. Because Jay Walker wants something. Jay Walker gets something. That, I think, is the bacon, right? Is this the bacon? Some thick bacon, but it's going to get eaten. We're, we're going to have to share. Hey, what, what is that you got there? Uh, I'm, I think that's the PB&Js. All right, I'm eating. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's hot. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Food coma at halftime. I give it about a about seven. I mean. About a seven. I mean, syrup and sugar oh, on anything is going to be good. Oh, but. yeah. Well, I'm willing to share a little bit of this. Just don't take the one. You know, that I already ate out. Meantime, Harris leaping at the first down marker. Let's see if they give him the spot. They do. So Harris laid all out for that. Yeah, but this is a poor decision. I like the effort towards the end to try and get the first down. But he deserved to get hit because he had a wide open wide receiver that was on the <laughs> sideline. Wait a minute. I just heard a quarterback say another quarterback deserved, deserved to get hit. Yeah, you got a wide receiver wow. that's open right in front of you. You may already be in a food coma. In the meantime, <laughs> down to the 30 yard line is Gravette, who's made a couple of big plays for Morgan State. Now, get They're up gonna, to the line of scrimmage yes. right now and spike the ball. Don't don't waste time. Don't try and call a play. Spike it. No, they're going to run the clock. You're wasting those seconds. So the spike it. You may need those eight seconds that you let just tick off. Plenty of time. He throws it and throws it away toward the band. You know, what we've seen him do have the ability to attack the seam. And once again, they find something. And look at this. I mean, nice pocket leads him into the hole. And we've seen Gravette has some success. Attack in the middle of the Bethune Cookman defense. But don't you hate that though? The, the clock management at the end. Yeah, I think they were hustling down there. They still have the, but this, only one timeout it. left, and I agree with you there. It's not now, about it's not a matter of downs, it's about time. Yeah, 23 seconds left. They still have the one timeout. And they'll go to the ground, and now they're gonna have to use the other timeout. Well, yeah, there it goes. Hey, you know, you know why I wanted a timeout? Because I actually want another bite of that bacon. Well, go ahead. Now you got <laughs> it's it. Pretty, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. And actually, when I first ate it, I was like, okay, it's a seven or whatever. But then I find myself wanting another bite. <laughs> so. Coming up to half, besides us eating, we have plenty more, including HBCU power rankings from Jay. Yeah, give me five. And, of course, we'll have the highlights and the stats. must turn into a very close and defensive-oriented contest between these two teams. And I will tell you, for that give me five Morgan State football alumni, you can put those up against some of the best teams in the country. Okay. I look forward to that. In terms of who, who's played football up there in Baltimore. So 17.7 to go. You're on the, the uh, 
with the wind, O'Shea could kick a field goal here if you if you can't get the first down. But now you don't have a timeout. And, and, you know, that's just one of those things. I'm just looking. I'm coming out. They still continue to double cover Bailey at the top of your screen. That's what you call bracket coverage. One inside, one outside. Boy, Harris had trouble with the snap. Down to the middle. Oh, and it's going to be low and incomplete. That was close. He tried to get it to Deontay White. And coverage provided there by Devontae Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah, they tried the double move with the pump, and that's too big of a pump down in the red zone. And he's fortunate because he absolutely did not see the defensive back coming across the formation. So, on to the field goal is O'Shea. This will be from 40. Harris will hold. Castano, the long snapper. This is low, and it snuck wow. over the crossbar. <laughs> that was the ugliest field goal, uh, successful field yes, goal I've seen in a while. Success. Main field goal for sure. So Morgan State doing more than hanging around in this game. We're down to 7.6 seconds remaining before the halftime break. And give credit to Coach Wheatley and the Bears. They're fighting. They're fine. It's not pretty. This game's been about as ugly as this field goal we're going to take a look at. But how high up the ground does this field goal go? You remember uh, Tim Hardaway? <laughs> yeah, yeah, ugly knuckleball that was rotation. A, that was a on. Tim Hardaway jump <laughs> shot right there. <laughs> that was it. They used to say ugly but deadly. Well, you know what? We talked about Morgan State defensively, and the thought pregame was that Bethune Cookman would have the chance to run all over them. And I tell you what. Today, they've only given up 10 first-half points in their first four games. They were giving up 25-and-a-half in the first half. So massive improvement for this Bears defense. Jimmy Robinson, breakaway threat for the kick return. Yeah, you don't kick it to him in this situation. You, you kick the ball out of bounds or squib it. Going to pooch it. Here comes Jimmy Robinson, but he's not going to get it. And the 15, and this is going to probably end our half. Well, it's a tenth of a second left. Let's see if they go ahead. Yeah, they're going to blow the half dead, I believe. As the two teams head to the dressing room, Morgan State giving Bethune all they can handle in the Wildcats home opener. We'll take a look at our HBCU power rankings and have more, including Jay's Gimme 5 of Morgan State football when we return to ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. Always great entertainment when the Bethune Cookman marching band takes to the field. And they cover the 15 of the 15 yard line. Big, talented band here in Daytona Beach. With Jay Walker, Dave Lamont, 10 6 Bethune in front of Morgan State. And that leads us, Jay, to your HBCU power rankings. I will tell you the thing that got it started was I started ranking the bands a couple years ago and got myself in trouble, but I stand by it. Bethune Cookman's one of the best bands in the country, uh, yep, if think. not number one. Just look at that size of them. But let's talk some football here. Okay. So talking about what team is number five right now, and mm -hmm. that's where the most controversy is. I'm going South Carolina State. Impressive victory over Wofford to start off the season. They had a couple non-conference games, which, you know, the money games, which they lost. But I think Buddy Pugh's got something going on over okay. there in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Number four? Well, you got to go with Southern. Southern, and here's why. This is controversial pick. Southern lost to Florida A&M earlier in the year. But that doesn't mean I put – uh, fam, you above Southern. Okay. It's like it's like if Alabama were to lose to Vanderbilt, you're not going to all of a sudden rank Vanderbilt number one. Not normally, you're no. So I'm dropping Southern down to number four. And number three. You're watching them. Wow, but they don't look like number three right now, do they? No, but <laughs> some of that is Morgan State's fault. Yeah, yeah Morgan State's been doing it, but I think Bethune-Cookman has an impressive body of work to warrant them being the number three team in the country right now in HBCU. 
Oh, let's, let's build up these last two here. Second will be the corn. Uh, all corn state. They don't say it's always all corn, not always. So all corn <laughs> state, hey, they've gotten better. They've proven that they've got not one quarterback in Noah Johnson, who was the preseason conference player of the year, but the addition of Felix Harper at the quarterback position in Johnson's absence. They have not skipped a beat. They've got a tough game today, which they take on Alabama State. But the number one team, it's like getting boring. It's been like this for the past like four or five years. North Carolina AMT. Not boring to them. Aggie Pride is rolling. <laughs> they continue to do it. Thrash Norfolk State today. Impressive football team. Yeah. They can beat you. Probably the most complete football team that I've seen in a while. And that 37 0 demolishing of Delaware State last week on ESPNU, where Delaware State didn't even cross the 50 yard line. That's watching some of that game. And now they got Jermaine Martin, the running back. They're loaded right now. It's going to be tough to beat the Aggies. It's going to take a very good team to slow down this Aggie pride dynasty that they've established. So there you see Jay's HBCU top five, topped by North Carolina A&T. But on the bubble, though, the team's not quite making it. Okay, honorable I'm mention. I'm going Florida a &M. Okay. Because, he, hey, Amy, I'll put you on the bubble because I'll give you credit for your victory over Southern, but you're going to have to play your way into being a top five team there. But, hey, Jay's give me five power rankings. You want to talk about it? Hit me up on social media at the Gimme Five Show or at Black College Live. Oh, another list coming up. Some of the greats that have played at Morgan State will be returned. We proudly bring you more of it. The new 9-11. Timeless machine. Ten six Bethune Cookman over Morgan State here at the half of the ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. A MIAC matchup and the home opener in Daytona for Bethune. But they're getting all they can handle from this Morgan State team, especially when Morgan State is on defense. It is a good thing Jay and I are wearing white shirts. You can't see the powdered sugar. <laughs> Cleaned everything up, and we're ready to go for the second half. But you got another big feature that you'd like to present. This time we're going to look at it from the Morgan State perspective. Yeah, I'm going to teach you real quick. All right? Okay. Learn, learn, learn how to do this. Work with me. All right. Give me five. Oh, yeah. Jay's give me five. Every now and then I got to make myself feel good, <laughs> remind myself I could throw it. But how about this? The five greatest football players in the history of Morgan State University. I'll, I'll put this up against arm anybody. Oh, the arm, arm is still challenge. there, but the arm's still there. But let's get it going. Number five. How about this? Raymond Chester. Oh, yeah. Played at Morgan State University. He's coming in number five. And not only he's a great wide receiver in the NFL, Oakland Raiders, things of that nature. He's number five. Number four. And this is where I had trouble. He could have okay. been higher up. Leroy oh Kelly. God. Yeah, the guy who replaced Jim Brown. Replaced Jim Brown in Cleveland. Legendary career. NFL Hall of Famer. Yeah. And he's coming in at number four All on right. this next list. next three better be good now. I think so. How about number three? All right. Lynn Ford. Oh, yeah. Another Hall of Famer. Another Hall of Famer yeah. there. Got started there at the campus at Morgan State University when they were competing with Grambling for national championships. Okay. NFL Hall of Famer. He's number three. Number two. Roosevelt Brown. I know the picture's oh, yeah, grainy there, but yeah, Rosie yeah, yeah. Brown, you know, take it over. But Rosie Brown deserved to be there, number two. Well, see who number one is. Ah, you got to see number one. And I'm a, I'm an offensive guy. I know. Right? So, you know, I got to stick with offense, right? All right. Got to stick with offense. Right, I'm, I'm joking. Kelly in there. You got I, I'm Roy joking. Kelly? Nah, I'm going on the defensive side of the football to. for this one there. How yeah. about Willie Lanier? Has to be. Anchor of Morgan State's defense and then went on to the old AFL, the Kansas City Chiefs and was the Hall of Famer first ballot guy there, so Willie Lanier. So that five right there includes four NFL Hall of Famers. Yeah, Ford is sort of overlooked by a lot of people because he played in the early days, I think he played with the Browns, yeah. for Paul Brown, maybe even all the way back in the old All-American Football Conference. But I think that's the right choice, number one. I might have actually moved Leroy Kelly up. Ooh, over Rosie Brown, maybe, huh? Over Just, there for it, okay. But, it's all right. It's only five, but that day, that's why we call it Jay's Gimme Five. Yes, exactly. That's why we call yeah, it Jay's Gimme Five. On the bubble, not quite making it. Vasante Shenko, that's more the new generation oh, yeah. tight end for the New York Giants. And Frenchie, mm -hmm. just because Frenchie for Qua. Oh, yeah. And he went to Morgan State. So anytime you got a name like Frenchie, then I'm going to put you on that list right there. Yeah, the immaculate reception began with his not catching the pass. The gotcha. Jack well, Tatum hit him. Well, we call the Jays. Give me five. You want to talk to me about it, debate me? Hit me up at Black College Live. We've got highlights of this first half. Competitive game here in Daytona with Bethune in front. 10-6. Rookie.
Beautiful day in Daytona Beach. Temperature right around the 80 degree mark and breezy conditions here. This ESPN college football matchup presented by McDonald's with Bethune leading Morgan State 10 to 6. And Jay, let's go back through some of the highlights of the first half. What's been a little bit of a surprisingly low scoring game. And I think it all comes out with controlling the line of scrimmage. We really thought that Bethune Cookman was going to come out here and have their way controlling the line of scrimmage. Well, whenever they couldn't get pressure, it was Morgan State that would make mistakes on themselves. The drop pass there to kill the drive. And I thought this was a big one. A catch down in the red zone and you put the ball on the turf, taking points off the board. This would, would have been a great touchdown run from Joshua Chase right there. However, it was a hold call there. Chase came out. He was really good. He was running that football for him. He was the guy that really kept them in this game and allowed them to have surprisingly success running the football against Bethune Cook. Now, Kevious Williams for Bethune has taken some shots in this game. Yeah, that's been surprising. We've seen Bethune Cookman lose a number of one on one individual matchups, forcing Williams to run a little bit more than he'd like to. That's the surprise for me, seeing them dominate the line of scrimmage. He has not had a lot of time to relax in the pocket. The pressure has been there every single time he drops back for a pass. It's an impressive performance by Morgan State defensively, rattling the Kevious Williams. And so Rico Kennedy with the sack. However, Akevius Williams has the game's only touchdown on a 64-yard run. Each team has turned it over. Morgan State's actually had the ball more and total yards virtually equal. Bethune is doing a good job running the ball, but 64 of those on one play. That is not Bethune cooking football. Yeah. Only 29 yards passing and getting uh, time of possession, losing that battle by five. Bethune Cookman normally does that to other teams. Mm -hmm. Morgan's done a good job of coming in here. And can I call a turn in tide? Yeah. We're, we're here in the beach city. Oh, I, get it, beach. I get it. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> well, Bethune last week in their win had 199 and 201 for rushing and pass yards. You can hardly do any better for balance right now. They're out of balance, but they are ahead. Bottom line, 10 to 6. We will have our second half kickoff. It will be Bethune football when we return to Daytona. Rookie. So Kevious Williams starting quarterback for Bethune, the key guy for their offense, of course, and he's had some success with his legs as you thought he would. Yeah, and that's, that was going to be the key. He had to run there to keep the drive alive for the first down, which he kicked the field goal, put points on the board. This one right here, this was the home run. Like how he set up the block and then showed the athleticism, able to finish off the run. Not having a great day throwing the football, but when you're a winner, you figure out other ways to win football games. And you see his numbers here, that rush of 64 yards, the only touchdown of the game. His offense will get the football back to start the third quarter. Jimmy Robinson, so dangerous, hanging around that eight-yard line, right at the top of the soccer box. The 18, they call it. Like I said, in the first half, I would not kick the ball to Jimmy Robinson. Well, he's a difference maker. Jimmy Robinson moves to the sideline to catch it. He swapped places with Bird so he could catch this ball, anticipating the kick, and he gets it out to the 32-yard line. So he and Quayshawn Bird switch places right before kickoff. Uh, well, you'll see this. He recognized they're going to do that pooch. And look at this. He's going to hit a nice full sprint. Let's go. Come on over here. And it almost paid off. He got to that area. And then once again, you almost wonder, and, and I don't blame him, you don't take a chance to let that ball hit the ground on the kickoff. No. Because they recover, but that's a really good job of pooch kicking. Well, in the win, State. too. Let's not forget that it's the, really the best you can do. In the meantime, the Phil Cookman has about five seconds to get this playoff. Washington is the tailback. They do beat the clock. Fake to Washington, one on one, and that pass sails way out of bounds. The intended receiver there was Marcus Riley, a former quarterback. And there's going to be a penalty flag for holding on Cedric Jackson. That that is not how you come out of the locker room. <laughs> I mean, you come out. It it, it actually should have been delay a game. I mean, I saw the I saw it on zero for a little minute. See, that's a yep. penalty. So they got lucky there. Then you come out with a long incompletion, and then you get a holding penalty. They need to turn up their level of intensity and try and take it to this Morgan State team here at home. 
And this Williams read that play nicely and saves himself a big hit. So short gain there. Picked up four. Uh, second down and it's like 16 to go. And this has been a gutsy performance by Morgan State defensively. Their defensive coordinator, Antonio James, might have solved the woes in the rushing defense. Staying on the ground. They get to the 31 yard line is Washington. Gain of five there. McBurrow and Malachi Washington on the stop. So third and about a dozen. And this is where we have not seen Bethune Cookman able to capitalize, and that's why you've had such poor passing numbers from Kevious Williams in this football game. I still believe he's a greater threat to run the football right now than he is to throw it. Well, you see, Bethune has not had a great day today on third downs nor this season. Going to dump it off here, though. This should be and will be a first down as Robinson continues. What a dynamic run. And Jimmy Robinson going to go all the way. 68 yards. When he gets the ball in his hands, he can be special. He Boy. can do special things. And you know the open field tackle is going to be almost impossible, but you're going to see him come across the formation, across your screen. And I like the patience from Williams, allowing him to separate, missed open field tackle, then the return skills kick in, up the sidelines. You're not going to catch him. Once Pick again, score. an angle mistake here too, I think, Jay, right? If the uh, cornerback, or maybe Robinson just too darn fast. Either way, you saw the balance and the speed. And a fine play by Williams, as you mentioned, his patience. And Bethune has hit two huge plays to open up their largest lead today. This time it's Robinson from 68, 50 of which he did himself. The new 911. Timeless machine. You're watching ESPN College Football, presented by McDonald's. And Bethune Cookman has a 64 yard touchdown run and now officially a 70 yard hookup from Williams to Robinson. And now Morgan State will get the football for the first time in this half. And a major test for DeAndre Harris and this offense. Jordan Cofield, can he get something done in the return game to give the Bears a jolt? Get a chance. And he takes the fair catch instead in possession of the 25 yard line. Let's take a look at that long touchdown score. And I like the way they drew up this pattern. So you're going to have the clear out route here. This is Jimmy Robinson. How does he get open? You bring him in behind with the secondary route coming sec uh, afterwards. And a good job by Williams buying some time and hitting him over here as we run the play. And this league, look. Not right there. Give him some time. Allow him to separate down the line of scrimmage. And then the rest becomes all Jimmy Robinson. But those are the creative ways that you get the football to your playmakers. They're going to play some zone. You run one guy through the zone. Have Robinson come in the back door for a big play. DeAndre Harris stays in at quarterback. Josh Chase will get the carry. And this is how they've gone on first down several times. But Chase right up the gut for about nine yards this time. They're going to mark him at the 33. So make it eight. It'll be second and two. And DJ Golot, number nine, is now the quarterback. My mistake. And this is the first time we have seen Golot. We were told that two quarterbacks would get the chance. Harris will not start this half. There is Golot out of Largo, Maryland. Chase again. And at this point, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is. Jay, you can come out of retirement. And if you hand the ball to Josh yeah. Chase, you're making a smart decision. Yeah, you're making good decisions, picking up positive yardage. And Tough break for Harris, you know, to be pulled when we talked about it wasn't his fault. I thought he played pretty well in the first half. But now, every now and then, scoreboard is what it's all about. And they want to see if maybe Golot can give them that spark they need to shrink this read, lead of Bethune Cookman. Williams into the tailback position. Golot will fire and drop. Another drop. And it's Bailey who did so at the 40 yard line. And then 
That's been a problem today for Morgan State. With mistakes by receivers. I mean, and that ball should have been caught. I mean, coming in first pass, I like the idea by Manger, the offensive coordinator, roll the pocket, get your new quarterback in there, a nice, easy throw. But then the senior wide receiver drops one. Yeah, go a lot, two interceptions, one TD so far. Now nine of 19 passing. With that drop, they'll get another chance here. Caught at the 40 yard line to Cofield. That'll be a three yard pickup. Third down, seven, an immediate tackle that time. And we see them opening up the playbook a little bit. It seemed like they're going to the pass a little bit more when you get go out in the game when you ask them to compare the quarterbacks they say they're pretty similar but when go lots in there we like to do a little bit more run pass option compared to Harris is more of a pure pocket passer blitz coming clean to the quarterback Marquise Hendricks nobody blocked him and, and you and you saw it better than DJ Gola did. He well, did not see him coming. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to see Hendricks is going to come right here. He's right in front of you, and I don't know how you miss him because all he does is take one little angle this way to come get you, and he just didn't see him. Didn't see him at all. Came right there. You have to, account, you have to be able to account for him as a quarterback. So a seven-yard loss on that sack. And Tyree Spain got his hand up. He is trying to shield the sun on the punt from Nicholas O'Shea. This will be interesting to see if Spain even tries to catch this. Well, he's not going to have to worry about it because it's a bit of a shanker, but it's going to bounce. And we'll die at the 29-yard line. Well, Jimmy Robinson had that big 70-yard touchdown reception, which most of which he did with his legs, and it's not the first time that he has gashed Morgan State. Well, look at that. Last year, rushed for 208 yards. Man. <laughs> so he's a playmaker. And the one thing I kind of like about Jim Robinson, the bigger the game and the bigger the audience, he shows up. Mm -hmm. Seems like every time I'm calling a Bethune-Cookman game, Robinson does something special, whether it's on special teams. Last year, he returned two kicks uh, against Howard in the Serving City Classic. And today, the big play. He's a playmaker. Quayshon Bird is the tailback number five. He'll get it. He'll bounce into a hole, and Bird will get hit hard, but he will fall for the first down, pick up a couple more to the 42, a gain of 13 before D.J. Trigg, who's returning at the safety position for Morgan State, makes the spot. This becomes a danger zone for Morgan State. You really can't afford to allow Bethune-Cookman to expand on this lead whatsoever. This time it's going to be Williams with a keep. Nice read by Williams, and he will pick up a solid seven. And all of a sudden, this is kind of what we thought the game was going to be with Bethune trying to impose their will on Morgan State. And I think the fact that Jimmy Robinson became a factor in the passing game and earned the respect of Morgan State opens up some running lanes. And they closed on that carry, though. That's going to be a loss of a yard. Sets up third down and four. Rico Kennedy continues to play brilliantly at that weak side linebacker position. He's had a good motor going for him. And when you get a guy that's coming downhill like that, I like to see them do a little bit more. Put that option between the quarterback pulling the ball occasionally because he's really coming down hard on the line of scrimmage. Interesting call here on third and four. They stay on the ground. They do. What a sweet move. That's going to be a first down and more into Bears territory goes Bird. 16 yards. They got lucky, and this is all... Quayshaw Bird because there was an unblock, unblocked man coming down the line of scrimmage and this is one where you're supposed to pull this ball. He came down hard and that was a mistake. Goldie, Goldie Warrior. Warrior missed the tackle and that would have been a huge play defensively. They stay to the ground. They stay with Bird. Bird continuing to gash big yards. He will get another first down all the way down to the 22 yard line before Kennedy and Trigg brought him down, but not until a 14 yard gain. And now the Wildcats playing at a faster pace, fastest we've seen today. And they stay to the ground. Oh, my Trigg just comes up, and just shoulder padded him. Man, 
That was a two-yard gain that will not be forgotten by Bird. Well, this is what you call finishing off the tackle. So one guy's got him high, he's going to miss. Momentum going forward? No, it's not. <laughs> Take a seat, son. And he did. He's on the bench at the moment. Now a little run pass option and a skipper. And it's just a not a good throw from Williams trying to get it to Robinson, third and eight. And if you complete that ball to Robinson, you know he can make something happen. But we're seeing Akivas Williams just not having a good day at the office throwing the football. They thought he was turning around a week ago. He was almost a 70% passer. But today, we've seen him just miss some wide open targets. He'll keep it. Can he get to the corner and get the first down? He certainly can. He'll get inside the 10-yard line before chased out by Gatling. First and goal, Bethune, with 8-14 remaining in this third quarter. And that's why defensive coordinators hate dual-threat quarterbacks. So, guy struggling, throwing the football. You're making him pretty one-dimensional. But then he's got the ability to take nothing and come up with something. Levels him up, becomes a foot race to the outside. Big game. 104 yards on the ground now for Akevius Williams. Timeout. The Bethune calls a timeout with 7.49 remaining. They are looking good with the lead and the ball. First and goal. All of this drive on the ground for Bethune. Now they've had eight plays, 65 yards, seven of those rushes for 65, and one incompletion. So we'll see what the strategy here now on first and goal with Washington, the tailback. Yeah, they're going to swing it back to Robinson on a lateral. Robinson will just race to the end zone untouched for the score. He didn't even break a sweat. <laughs> Not even on an angry day did he break a sweat. I mean, in the, in the red zone, normally it's hard to, you know, anticipate things happen a little quicker. He turned the corner. Once he sized him up, he knew it was a foot race to the pylon, and he just knew there was no way he was going to lose. I mean, this is a lateral. And watch him size up the teams and say, oh, man. I did not think he was going to go in there untouched. I thought he'd at least have to die, but that's how fast Jimmy Robinson is. That will go as a rushing touchdown for Robinson from six yards out. And Bethune is up now, an 18-point lead, and putting Morgan State in an uncomfortable position, the most uncomfortable they have been in so far. Our Week 5 Monday night football matchup has Jimmy Garoppolo in the 3-0 49ers against Baker Mayfield and the 2-2 Browns and Levi's. Cleveland 4-1 against the Niners in the last 25 years. They have not met a lot. They have to go back only 19 times since 1960. That's 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. There go the White Hats. You know, I said this during the Miak Swack challenges. I don't know if I've seen a, a team that's more in line with their band. <laughs> <laughs> then Bethune Cook was like, when that band gets hyped up, it does something to this team. So, like, the second half, third quarter, after a halftime performance, and the band is there, yep. and the White Hats, I call them the White Hats, even though they're the marching Wildcats. Whenever the White Hats get going, you throw in a little bit of 14 carat. See, the girls will call it 14 carat cold dancer. You throw that in, the crowd gets into it, and this team just gets hyped up off of their band like no other I've seen. And the band is behind the home bench, so they can really feel that musicianship. Cofield will run this one back. <laughs> Ouch. 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 Devontre Hampton. And Jamari Laguerre. And Cofield is unfortunately shaken up a bit, and it's perfectly understandable why. And the Cofield is running full speed 100 miles. He gets there. He just doesn't see him coming. And wham. Yeah, Two that up. was 29. He got the most of the contact, Laguerre. So from the 23-yard line, and Golan will stay in. Williams will be the tailback. Glad to see that uh, Cofield moving a little bit better. Crisis point here for Morgan State. To the ground they go, with Chase disappears after a two-year gain. 
Montero Johnson among those getting off the pile for Bethune. You know, you know, the Wildcats are on the prowl because they can't play right now because Morgan State has the ball, but the band, they're feeling something. They're feeling something. The, the folks on the field, the sideline of Bethune, the players, they're like, okay, hey, we're on the prowl right now. The Wildcats are prowling some bears right now. Now that's going to be five more, a mental error there. Marvin Francois, perhaps moved by the rhythm, coming out of the stands, just moved way too early that time. Now second down, 13. They stay on the ground. And Chase did well to lose two yards. <laughs> he did. That could have been a four-yard loss. And suddenly Bethune is putting the clamps down, and it looks like Morgan State is going to be forced to go to the pass game, which down by 18. They may probably were going to have to do anyway. Hey, take a chance. I'm sending Menashe Bailey on a post route or a go route. All right, throw it deep. If they intercept it 40 yards down the field, it's just like a punt. But you're giving your playmaker an opportunity to make a play. Let's we'll see if Bethune heats up the pocket with the blitz. Or if they rush only four. They rush four, drop the rest into coverage. Goal line. Nice route. Well, there's Bailey. There's that your route. guy. And that's a first down. That route was sweet. 17 yards. Now, you talk about NFL talent. That was one of the best routes I've seen run by a collegiate player. I mean, bottom of your screen. And what you really like about this one, he's going to try and eat up cushion, give him a move here, and then come out of the break quickly there to make it an easier throw. So everybody's thinking about the deep ball going. Give him a move there, come right back out, create that type of separation for the first down. Nice route, nice throw. Play action. And out in space, 50-yard line, and a little bit more is Gravett. And he will get into Bethune territory. And, and we thought Harris played well in the first half, but what I'm seeing from Golot is ball comes out a little bit quicker, a little bit more decisive with his reads, anticipates a little bit better. And you can see why they're excited about the young sophomore from Prince George's County, Maryland. Back to the ground. This is Josh Chase and gets inside the 45 to the 42. That's a five-yard pickup. Marquise Hendricks, number 19 on the stop. Second down and five. When you watch Chase run, he just he just has that lean. I mean, the great runners, when they get hit, they still lean forward for an extra two yards. And we've seen that from him tonight. Even with contact, still able to keep those legs going and pick up positive yards. Got him at 92 yards. He's going to add five more to that. First down, it should be, and is, as they move the chains. So Morgan State really needed a positive answer, and at the moment, they're offering up one. Chase is going to stay in. It looks like they're going to go with two backs here, Chase and Lavelle and Williams. You see Chase now over 100 yards. which exceeded that, 18 for 102. Going to go for Bailey. One on one. It's overthrown. In coverage that time was Amari Hill Robinson. That's an incomplete pass, but you send a message. Mm -hmm. You send a message. You better get some help. Take one guy out of the box, and you'll see Bailey with the ability to get by him. He's going to get by him on that inside sling. Just overthrew him, but that was some speed. Typical Florida, around 5 o'clock starts to rain. We've got a sun shower, which is a little bit weird. And I'll give you something else that's weird, very Florida-like. After this play, oh, you got to be careful with that overthrow for a uh, wolf look. It's raining only in part of the stadium. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, we're getting a couple drops directed toward our booth. But it, this won't last. And I'm going to tell you something, though, about HBCU football games and rain. They don't go together now. Sister's not getting that hair wet. I'm just telling you. <laughs> they, they're going to make a run for the border. <laughs> it's third and ten. That's for the record, that was Jay Walker. So. That was absolutely yeah. Jay Walker. <laughs> Down the middle. That's going to be short. A 
solid catch by Wolfe because he got blasted. Fourth down, short, seems like obvious go for it territory here for Morgan State. Joshua Chase. Fourth and one, I'm giving the ball to Joshua Chase, the way he's been running the football in this game. Even if there's contact made short of the line of scrimmage, he's had that lean. Are you a little, uh, little zone read here? Maybe quarterback keep? No, I'm yeah. giving it to Chase. All right. Well, he's on the left hip of Golot. Now the right hip. It is Chase. It is close. And he got it, but even though it was bottled up a little bit, he's still going to give you that forward lean to possibly give you a chance. It'll come down to that spot, but this will be a spot they'll have to review. I thought he picked up enough yards to he get did. the first down. He did. It's a first down. Chase over 100 yards in this game. Probably a shower coming off the ocean. Trying to time that pattern to Bailey, but it was knocked away by Laguerre, who's earned some playing time after that hit he provided on special teams. I'm trying to call the skinny post. That's what you do, and that's when they're trying to force feed the ball to Bailey. Their NFL talent wide receiver. Well, you got Gravette number 80, who's lined up to the quarterback's right, almost in a tight end position. He's played well. Might be another guy to look at. And instead, they try to force that over to DeAndre White. Third down and 10 clock. Stop at 311. 13th play of the drive. They need points. And I think right there, what you see from Golot. We talked about we, he makes quick decisions, which I think coordinators like, but he's a 50% passer, and that's why. I mean, on the college level, you have to be able to make that throw nine out of ten times. Five-yard out route, it's like stealing. You have to be able to complete it. This time, design run. Ducked under, and it's going to be close again. A couple of yards short of the first down on the run by Golot. Now, fourth down and two. Tyrone Wheatley facing a decision. I think this is an easy one. Field goal doesn't really do a whole lot for you here. And once again, we'll see the Morgan State runner, ball carry. In this case, it's goal line. Watch him go underneath the tackle. He's going underneath and making it close, but I think you take the field goal here. Well, that's exactly what they're going to do. And the holder is a little bit tardy getting on the field, but now DeAndre Harris does show up. This will be from 36, so... Morgan State has a couple of O'Shea field goals. They got three to get it off. Two, they do get it off in time, and it's blocked. So the Wildcats block the field goal, and Morgan State, all that offense. Devontae Lawrence comes up with the blocked field goal. And it's going to be nothing for the Bears. But what a difference it makes for the offense for Bethune Cookman in the first half. They had 172 total yards in this half. We haven't finished third quarter yet. 149. Starting to pour it on. This is the type of start we thought Bethune would have done to start off the game, but they went in, made some second half adjustments, and dominated in this third quarter. And now a flea flicker. Williams lays it up in the air, and it's incomplete. Gatling was in coverage against Jimmy Robinson, and it looked like almost the Morgan State defense had a better shot at that at Gatling than Robinson did. Yeah, you're starting to take control of this football game, and I like going to Jimmy Robinson, but look, that's that should have been an interception. Two defenders there, a little razzle-dazzle on first down. I don't mind razzle-dazzle if it's on second and short, but on first down, going with the high-risk play, now you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself to they run the ball well. I wonder if the, the attitude is we can get away with it because it's first down. Let's see. Let's see if it pays off. Yep. <laughs> I think it does. Bird running well. Sets up third down and three as Garns flips him over. And a great block from Cedric Jackson. Well, they 
marked him back a yard, so it's a six-yard pickup. And it's been this formation that has opened up the running game for Bethune Cook and give credit to offensive coordinator Allen Sue with this little two by two formation seemed to open up the running lanes. And they are closed. Rico <laughs> Kennedy helped close him number 28 and he had some help from Malachi Washington. Those two together have been very, very good today for Morgan State. And so it doesn't work out with a trick play on first down and Bethune will have to punt. College football, I mean, I'm no genius up here, but it's all predicated on having success on first down. And those teams that don't have success on first down in football games normally are on the losing side of the bracket. When I say success, picking up two or three yards, you know, if you can pick up three, that's the benchmark. Under a minute remaining in this quarter as Coward is on to punt. Pressure. They didn't get it somehow. And a difficult catch made at the 27-yard line by Wolfhook. Well, Tyrone Wheatley is a name that I think every college football, even pro football fans, are very aware of. In his first year as the head coach here at Morgan State, he had been at Jacksonville as a running back coach, played 10 years in the NFL, and, of course, he was a superstar at Michigan there. And he has inherited a difficult task here trying to get this Morgan State team going in the right direction. And, you know, talk to him about you know, the obvious question, why Morgan State? And he actually likes the challenge of trying to raise African-American men at HBCU. What the mission is all about more than football. And that pass is knocked down, second down and 10. Looked like Najee Young got a piece of that. But well, it's, it's important that these guys who sign with any school come out better than when they came in. And somebody sometimes overlook the non-football part of all of this. Back to the ground, and this time it's going to be a keeper by Golot. Great job on the zone read, and he'll get out to the 40. That's going to be a solid 13-yard pickup and first down with the clock running at 35. And that's what we talked about, the quick decision. And when you're going to be a run-pass option quarterback compared to a pocket pass, you tend to make those quicker decisions. Good job calling his own number for the first down. This is Chase. Nothing. Door slammed shut. And Devin James, the middle linebacker, had a little help from Darius Clark. And quarter may run out before this next play gets called. And DeAndre Harris is back in at quarterback. And that will be the end of the third quarter. Bethune leads it 24-6 after outscoring Morgan State 14-0. Big play by Jimmy Robinson. Pass and a lateral. And that is the Bethune band in action with some help. From the, what do they call again, the ladies? 14 karat. 14 karat gold dances. All right. From the, got Harris back in at quarterback. He comes out firing, hits it to Bailey. Bailey! What a move! <laughs> he looked like he was going to be trapped and instead gets it all the way down to Bethune territory in a 29 yard pickup. I mean, look at this. Caught it short. We saw earlier. The flashes, the ability to get out of a break quickly. Nice move, and woo! He juked him and turned on the Jets for a big play for Morgan State. Morgan State really needs to, as you can see by the score and time, down 18. Harris has the edge if he wants it, and he takes on the tacklers. He'll get almost nine yards on that. They might give him nine as Hendricks is in there on the stop. I thought he was going to slide, Jay. And instead, he lowered his shoulder pads. I he gets hit when he makes poor decisions. All right, tell, I want you to tell me, is this guy open in, All right. in the scene? Now I'll be looking for this just is, this, is, this is college football. All right, and... He, yeah, yeah. Now that was a play before. Sorry, okay. that's not it. That was the Washington play. Or excuse me, the Bailey play. And that's not much there for Williams. Really no gain on the play. It'll be third down. Have about a yard and a half to go.
A yard and a half to go. I want to see number 24 in the backfield for he's, Morgan State. He's been dependable for him. He's in there. Over 100 yards rushing. In fact, over 110 yards rushing now for Josh Jackson. We got one-on-one -on -one up top with Bailey, though. Quarterback, keeper, Harris gets it. And does not like the slide. It didn't run out of bounds either. And instead, he turned it up and picked up some additional yardage. So a first down for DeAndre Harris. And what is pretty much a must score situation, not just a field goal, which they tried before and was blocked. This is a must touchdown situation here for Morgan State. That's Chase. Stutter step. Nice little move to find the crack in the defense, and there wasn't a very big one. He'll get to the nine. And he's been properly coached. I mean, for a young runner to have the patience on that outside zone stretch, to stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, then go. You don't see a lot of kids that can do that in college games successfully. It'll be Chase again. Got great feet, too, and great vision. He saw that hole open up that we did, and he gets it to first and goal. He's now going to be over 120 yards on the day. I think, I think unofficially we have him at 124 after that six-yard pickup. He will not get to 125, <laughs> not at least on that play. As he is swallowed up by Uriah Gilbert, number 50, and that's a lot of Uriah Gilbert right there. That's a big man. Let's take a look and see, and this is all about one-on-one -on -one matchup. No place to go, and as you mentioned, swallowed up by Gilbert, the big 6'3", 325-pound defensive tackle. So a straight run for Harris. Close, but not in. Third and goal, Clark on the stop. Clock running at 11 and a half, remaining in this MEAC game. Home opener for Bethune. They're 1 and 0 in conference play. Morgan State yet to win this season. They are 0 and 1 in the MEAC. They're bringing out Gilbert, the big defensive tackle. Now's the time to run up the middle. Backup defensive tackles in the game. You come out quickly, go under center. Bouncing off a nice job by Harris to feel his way into the end zone. His first rushing touchdown of the year, and Morgan State has some hope. Well, that's the way to respond. Well, they bring Harris back into the game to start the fourth quarter. He leads him down the field. And you mentioned it was that second effort sliding down the offensive line to get to the end zone for the Bears. Harris on that drive, 20 yards on the ground, and one for one, 29 on that pass run combo that worked so well with Bailey. We talked about Chase showing the patience, the patience, then turning on the Jets. Impressive drive by the Bears. Timeless machine. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. Take your car on the beach, you can do that in Daytona in some spots, not everywhere. And beautiful beaches here in what I call East Central Florida. 24-13, the Morgan State Drive goes 12 plays, 73 yards in 4 minutes and 40 seconds. 11.06 to go, and Jimmy Robinson awaits the kickoff. Now, where will he go this time? <laughs> last time, at the last second, he shifted to deal with the pooch kick. Let's see if he does it again. Nope, and they kick it deep, and they kick it to him. Mistake. At the four. He is very patiently waiting to turn on the speed, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 26-yard oh, line. penalty. And... They're going to call a, a wipeout block. Uh, you know, I know that's not the correct term for it, but blindside. Blindside hit. There's a couple of markers down. None related to the tackle that was out of bounds because that was just part of the play. It was not a late hit out of bounds. But we have two flags down at the 22 and one of the 26-yard line. So that this is the most officials I've seen huddle around of the referee today. So here's what you're talking about. 
I mean, that, that's no, not going to be fine. before that, no. but it was that, the block to set it up before that. Yeah, I don't think that's a penalty at all. If so, the line judge would have thrown the flag there. Here's what we were talking about. Watch. Can't you see right there? Right, bang. Oh, and the bottom. Personal and the, foul by oh, Eli Bass. Yeah. Receiving team number 39. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, blindside block, number 20, receiving team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Well, now we saw the block in the back. The penalty was declined. <laughs> so show me the blindside again. Yeah, this is all about safety. So they're trying to say this is the defender that's going to get hit. Okay. Keep an eye on him. Now, he's defenseless. He's looking at the ball carrier. You see that. All you have to do is get in the way. Uh, but those days of launching and trying to wipe him out, they're taking out of, out of college football. Yep, that's the I mean, right call. Cause he, you can literally just stand right there and push him, and mm -hmm. you're going to make an effective block. But you are not allowed to wipe out that guy anymore. That's a defenseless player they're calling him that, and the referees got it right on the field. Terry Sims was pretty hot about it. You can see the officials say, hey, come on, coach. And that, I think when Terry looks at that later, he will see what we saw. So the handoff here to Isaac Washington, trying to get to the edge. He will get to the 15, to the 16. Look at him leaning forward, something you've talked about today with Josh Chase. And he gets all the way to the 18 with that forward lane. You know, every so often, the the officials, the NCAA officials, get together in the rules committee. How do we make the game safer? You know, we had our meetings before, you know, Rogers, Redding, and everybody, yeah. they explained that to us. They're taking that part out of the game, and I agree with it. It's kind of not necessary when you can make a block effectively just by getting in the way rather than trying to blow somebody up all the time. Well, it was second and four. They said his knee was down to the 16, not the 18. It doesn't matter because now it's first and 10. As Bethune, I got to think here, Jay, it's time to use the cliche ground and pound here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, deflate the football a little bit, run some clock, pick up some first downs. You've got an 11-point lead. Let the clock be your friend. Yeah, that was read by Morgan State defense. Good job there by the interior. They've... They've, at times, they've done a good job making some stops. Well, that was interesting because number 65, who you just saw run off the field, is listed as an offensive lineman in Micah Jarrett. Maybe things get a little bit thin on the There's defensive front. There's nothing thin about a defensive line, <laughs> right, for the record. At least not in the middle of it. Yeah, Maybe on the, uh, the edge guys, that's one thing. Especially one with an old lineman on there. Exactly. Right. Nothing thin there. Play action fake. And Williams on the run. And he'll do the safest thing he could do. McBurrow was chasing him, got a hand on him, pushed him out of bounds. So it's going to be third and nine coming up. And that temporarily stopped the clock. Now it starts again with 9-14 and counting. Very important for Morgan State if they're going to have any chance here to turn this over right now. Yeah, good look there at Ian McBurrow. That inside linebacker leader for this Bear team. Can they come up with a stop? Particularly against a quarterback that struggled throwing the football all afternoon. So he decides to get it to a playmaker, and Robinson is going to be stopped short of the first down. A fine tackle by Marquise Thorns, number 26. Robinson's a couple of yards short, so Bethune will punt. And they'll send out Bryce Coward. And we're starting to see, this, I mean, this Morgan State defense is starting to get an identity. They've got some. Guys that can fly around the ball, Rico Kennedy, Malachi Washington. And I think the question still out there for the Tim Cookman offensively is what do we got to do to kickstart that offense? They thought they had it going after last week's victory, but today, 24 points against a team that's averaging giving up 47 points can't have them feeling any more better about their offense. Punt didn't get off his foot all that cleanly, but it is going to roll. Sideways called dead at the 29 yard line. 40 yards on the kick for Coward. So Morgan State will try to continue the rally. Their last time when they had the ball, they scored. So we proudly bring you more of it. The new 9 11 Timeless Machine. Let's take a look at the night's Bringing the Flavor presented by McDonald's.
Great scenes here in Daytona at Municipal Stadium. Larry Kelly Field, now Morgan State. Their last two drives, Jay, 14 plays, 58 yards, blocked field goal. Last drive for the touchdown, 12 plays, 73 yards. This will be Harris on the keep. Trying to shift gears. He's going to be brought down around the 32, maybe the 33-yard line by Tony Bowman. And we've seen him move the ball, but the one that came up without the points, that, that's kind of, that may come back to haunt them being down by 11. However, they have to have a little bit more sense of urgency. Now, those were long drives. Took, you know, five, six minutes. Now, you don't want to have a five-minute drive. Yeah, it was over 10 minutes of clock. They burned with those two drives. Going for a big throw here, and it's going to be incomplete. Trying to get it to Gravette, who got a hand on it. Throw a little bit high, and a lot of pressure that time on by Ontario Johnson on DeAndre Harris. So suddenly third and seven, clock stops, 7.27 to go. The sun just about and, and, set here. In passing situations, you need to find where Marcus Ford is, number 48 defensive end. We haven't called his name yet, but he's waiting to make a big play. He's going to stay in coverage this time. More pressure. Big hit on the quarterback, and that is overthrown. And Harris shaken up. Marquise Hendricks let him have it just about the time he threw the ball. I mean, this was an absolute shot. You don't see quarterbacks in college ball get hit this hard very often and cleanly. You see Hendricks, you can't stop that. And the central didn't judge land is on right him. there. Right. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he hit, didn't Man. land on him and smashed him to the ground. Got that helmet right around the armpit the and the rib area. And, and that's what they always say as a quarterback. When you throw the ball, you're an unprotected player. You're pretty vulnerable. You leave yourself open. Are you okay with no flag there? Okay. I thought so too, but uh, you played the position. You've had to take. Uh, uh, nobody I'm, ever hit you, know, you that hard, I'm uh, sure. Uh, uh, believe it or not, yeah, I got tore. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, when you slow mo, when you put things in slow motion, anything can look like it. You know, helmet drop, the crown helmet. Nah, that was a that was a football play. That was going to be a big hit. The quarterback saw him coming, threw the ball anyway, trying to get rid of it. Yeah, I Air is still shaking up. Hopefully he will be okay. They do have DJ Golot who has played tonight. But we're looking at fourth down and seven. A likely punting situation here for Tyrone Wheatley's Bears. But that was a, a vicious hit that Harris took. And the athletic training staffs around. They're going to get him to his feet, thankfully. I mean, he's kind of stuck in the pocket, and once Marquise Hendricks realized that he was not going to be able to get outside, going away to your left, hard hit. I mean, but you brought up a great point. Hendricks let go after the hit. If he wraps him up and drives him, then you are yeah. going to get that flag. But he did the right thing there. That's good coaching by the Bethune staff and a smart play by the senior from Ocala. In the meantime, Harris, understandably, still a bit shaken. And there is Golot, ready if necessary. But at the moment, the punt team is going to have to come out, it looks like, and they are. And that's what they talked about. It's a friendly quarterback battle between Harris and Golot, and you saw right there. Golot, one of the first Bear players to go over there and check on Harris. Got a little wobble on this one. Fair catch at the 31-yard line. Let's go around the conference, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, and see what we have here. A tough day for Howard against Harvard and a couple of great academic institutions going at it. North Carolina A&T took out Norfolk State. A&M beats NC Central and coming up tonight, in fact, very shortly, uh, South Carolina State, Delaware State. Yeah, that, that Florida A&M Central, it was, it was homecoming time down there in Tallahassee, so uh, Central gave them a good fight, but the Rattlers able to pull it off. North Carolina A&T, impressive victory over Norfolk State. That was a competitive game a season ago, but the Aggies proving everybody that they are no joke. Kevius Williams come back. He is rushed for 105. He has passed for 112. And 
that is a late decision to pull and just the right decision as he is brought down again it appears that big old number 65 Micah Jarrett has become a defensive lineman unless somebody has changed jerseys and what they're doing now remember they had the bunch formation where they would have Jimmy Robinson stack mm -hmm. it was a two by two well now all they're doing is saying we're giving you the same two by two formation kind of but we're just not stacking the guys and that seems to open up the running lanes let's see if Morgan State makes the adjustment and now you should throw the ball instead they'll run it and it'll be Bird who has run really well in this half he'll get a first down Kennedy brings him down here's where Bethune could pretty much put a bow on this game right now what you call championship drive time you have an opportunity to seal a football game Take That's down some point. clock and put some points on the board. Yeah, if you're serious about winning this conference, this is your chance to show people that you have that capability. And I would think that Doom is very serious about winning this conference. They're on their way to 2 0 in the MEAC. And they have a short week coming up against North Carolina Central. That game's on the 10th. You don't even get a full week of prep for that. Was he down? I think Bird was. Kennedy with another tackle. And although uh, Nicholas Ruse was able to fall on the football, I think it's going to be safe. He wants everybody to know he got it. And we talked about we love the balance that he has there. Knees down, he's yeah. down. Bird has run for 64 yards in this half, 82 for the game. Ladarian well, Wilson, number 27, will check. Can you take a look at Robinson? Two touchdowns there for number one. And Powell in front of him. Now they go to that kind of a Baylor look from years ago. And trying to get you to open up so you can open up the running lanes. Stead Williams will keep it. And he'll get to the 45. Kennedy again. And he gets up, looks tired, and how can he not? And these are the things at the quarterback position. You have to know the circumstance. It's second and one. You call an aggressive play call, double move. It's not there. Throw it. So you come up to third one. He was fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage to have third one, but he could have just got rid of football. On third and one, they're going to go to the air. They're going to get it to Robinson with room. Oh. And look out. It's over. Touchdown, Bethune. That's knowing your strengths as a play caller right there. And that is his third touchdown. And once again, Morgan State will be making sure they're going to send somebody to graduation to make sure he walks across <laughs> the stage so they never see him again. I mean, he was shifted, but great downfield blocking by the wide receivers. He found the lane in the crease. And once he sized up number 16, it was over. If I'm Bethune, I find a way to change his name, give him a different number, and call him Remy Jobinson and send him out next year. You know what? There is another Jimmy Robinson on this football team, and they're brothers, just a freshman. So there'll be Robinsons around here for years to come. But the senior Jimmy Robinson has been the man in this football game, getting it done. Enough of it. So we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911 Timeless Machine. So it's party time here in Daytona at Municipal Stadium with Jimmy Robinson, his third touchdown of the night. He has accounted for 136 receiving yards and just four catches. Make it five. So Jordan Cofield awaits the kickoff. Short kick, Cofield will sprint up and give it a shot. He fights off one. If he can get to this side and he changed his mind at the last second, he is still putting up a tremendous effort and will be finally down at around the 30 yard line, 22 yards on that return. Let's see if it's going to be Golot at quarterback number nine, and it is. Harris shaken up on that last drive. He really took a hit. And good to see number 37 in the football game. He took a vicious yes. shot on the previous kick return there, but showing he's a tough kid back on the field. So Josh Chase has run over 110 yards today. He's the tailback. We'll see if Golot is going to pitch it and try to get something quick here for Morgan State. 
Dump it out to Chase. Chase has some room. And he'll get to the 35-yard line, gain of five. Both teams, Morgan State, I should say, has three timeouts. Bethune has two. James in there among the tackles for Bethune. And down by 18 points, you need three scores, but that's why I said earlier, you had a feeling that blocked field goal will have an impact oh, on this game. Bad snap. Came out low. Golot falls on it. Loss of four. These are the mistakes that the growing pains are going to have to go through at Morgan State. I mean, just a snap there that just doesn't come up. Off target, low, left side. Go a lot. Dumps it out. This could be a first down. If you beat one tackler, can't do it. Chase and a fine tackle in the open field sets up fourth down and short. And I have to assume a one last shot here for Morgan State. We're coming up on three minutes to go to get the first down. Yeah, absolutely. And they've had success running the football behind George Chase in these situations all afternoon. And they go for the quick turn, quick play, the catch by Gravette first down. No surprise they elect to throw the football in that situation. But a good decision by Galat rewards the Bears with a first down. Now you need to get this play call. Clock's not on your side. No, nothing is on Morgan State's side at the moment except they have possession. Golot going to try to scramble. Makes a couple of nice moves and gets into Bethune territory. A couple of yards short of the first down. Gain of eight. James with another stop. Nice move and he made some great moves in traffic too. That's not going to work. That time to pass to Chase. I'm not so sure he gained anything on there. The only thing he did was stop the clock. And you see on the previous play, nice pocket presence. Looks, yeah, you know, got to secure that football a little bit more. But then makes a nice cut on the inside, picks up some extra yards, and just two yards short of the first down. Keep it first down. Be careful. Don't run too sideways. He did get the first down. <laughs> You've already had one quarterback get knocked out. I don't know if quarterback draw is going to be on my play calling right now. Unless you want to see Doc Bonner come in this game. That's the, the freshman third string quarterback. Now we had DeAndre Harris taken out of the game by a hard but clean hit by Marquise Hendricks. Hit it. Look painful just to watch. Can't even imagine what it felt like. Down the middle. Dropped. Boy, that looked good, too. Everything was in place except the catch not made that time by Robinson. Skinny post. And that was a nicely thrown ball by DJ Golot. And that's what Morgan State's going to have to work on. Too many balls that the wide receivers don't come away with. The drop passes that don't help out. Your quarterbacks hurt your team. Go a lot on second and ten. Swing pass out to Chase. Chase will get as much as he can and avoid the hit. Get it out of bounds. Stops the clock. 149 to go. You mentioned coming up next for Bethune State. A short turnaround. They'll play Thursday night at North Carolina Central. Morgan State Saturday. They'll be home against Delaware State. A good opportunity for Tyrone Wheatley to try and get his first victory as a coach at Morgan State. And took away the outlet pass and a nice throw and Deontay White showing great balance and a flag coming in really late. 18 yards. Let's see what the penalty is. Result of the play is a first down after the play was over. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Defense number 52. At the distance to the goal, first down. Now that's Devin Stubbs. And what was that call? Said so Terry Sims. You can read his lips very clearly. Hey, what was that call? <laughs> it's 
So into the red zone we go. Underneath, Chase has become a very valuable receiver out of the backfield. Rashawn McNeil on the push out of bounds. You can tell Bethune Cookman content to keep everything in front of him and make the tackle. Morgan State has been content just taking small pieces of yardage at a time. They lost seven out of eight in this drive, but for 43 yards, so they've not given him the chance to really let loose. Took a little bit of a hit that time and an awkward land out of bounds, but he gets up quickly. Down to 92 seconds left. And right now, I think that Charles Jones is about to send the house out. Third and six. Go for it. He's been playing, you know, off coverage, playing quarters across the field, but you can tell the frustration from his linebackers. They're asking, hey, can we come up? Can we get up in their faces? And Go a lot. Well, he had Chase and he just overcooked it. I don't know whether he thought Chase was going to run more to the spot. I mean, Jay, that you would understand that better than I did. Sets fourth and six. And that's a swing pass. That's more of a timing thing. And it's not as easy a throw as it looks. That's more muscle memory, having repetition, doing it over and over again. So, what do you take out of this game if you're Morgan State? Conference wise, they may be competitive. They, they may not be as bad as people think. You know, we think that with the 0 5 record, 0 4 record, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. coming into this game. Well, this is their fourth drive of at least 12 plays. They just have not had the points to show for it, although they may get them here. No, they do not. Interception by Tiberius Peters. And we'll see Bethune go into victory formation to go 2 0 in the MIAC. And this is if you're going to play some type of prevent defense and they call it playing to the chains, knowing where you are on the field. That was a good job by their linebackers and their secondary dropping to the goal line and keeping everything in front of us. You know, you know they were getting impatient, but they got it to fourth down. And when you watch everybody, they're going to go get to the goal line. And if you can get to the goal line, keep everything in front of you, then you can attack. And the moment they try to go beyond that, you see that they're going to the goal line. And the moment you try to squeeze it in, we've got too many people at the goal line waiting for you to squeeze the throw in. It's a good concept of knowing where you are on the football field. Well, they don't take a traditional victory formation. We're attempting to reset the play clock. And they're just trying to get the play clock proper. You see yards per play, Bethune with eight. And Devin Black is in the quarterback, number 17. Trevor Gear is the running back. So some reserves getting some chances. Gear's going to carry it and get out to the 24. Rico Kennedy is going to play right to the end. Sports Center from L.A. tonight after Washington Stanford with Linda and Stan. We'll have Kirk Herbstreit's biggest takeaways from the day. Twins, Yankees, Rays, Astros, game two breakdowns. UFC 243 post fight coverage with Daniel Cormier's analysis. That's all on Sports Center after college football on ESPN. And of course, if you're out and about on the ESPN app. You want to know what Jay Walker's biggest takeaway is for the day? I do. Of course I do. That Howard is truly an academic institution because <laughs> we're not playing good football right now. I see. Well, how about you? Uh, you just don't go walking into Cambridge and expect to come out with a win. Oh, man. Cambridge, such a such a rowdy, raucous spine to go into. <laughs> I'm disappointed wow. in my boys, man. I just got to say, uh, I don't love how it got through and through, man. But you don't go up there and lose to Harvard like that. So that means no Ben's Chili Bowl for the team tonight. But look at you know about Ben's Chili Bowl. You're talking to a Northern Virginia native. Oh, man. Oh, okay. Yeah. Next you're going to tell me you know something about mumbo sauce and go-go music. <laughs> I know who the Go-Go's are. Go-Go <laughs> music, I'm not quite so sure. Down to a minute nine that left. So coming up, we mentioned that Bethune NC Central game from Durham, North Carolina on ESPN U Thursday should be explosive. And then Saturday, A&M will That's take on one. South Carolina State. 
And then on November 2nd on ESPNU Central and Howard from the nation's capital. Yeah. yeah now, yeah, will yeah, you be at that game? I will. I will. The one I'm looking forward to, though, next Saturday, Florida A&M at South Carolina State. Both of those teams are trying to battle for supremacy, the one up to see which one can be the one to challenge North Carolina A&T. And, of course, the, the game in Durham. Watching Bethune Cookman again with the Trey Oliver era at North Carolina Central been a little bit of a shaky start and I expect high expectations for their program and it hasn't been matched yet. Third and six. Gear and we'll have fourth down coming up. So Morgan State's going to play this right to the echo of the whistle and they'll take their final timeout. So Bethune will likely send out the punt team. You mentioned Bethune and NC Central and uh, Norfolk State and South Carolina State here. And we'll have a bye between those two games. Then they go to Delaware State, North Carolina A&T, and finished. It's always fun when Bethune and FAMU meet. Florida A&M has lost that game eight consecutive years. And last year, Florida A&M had $1 million on the line. If you win, you go to the Celebration Bowl. They got beat by Bethune Cookman and had their season end. They have a feeling that Willie Simmons and the Rattlers would love to return the favor to a Wildcat team if they're in contention for a championship. So the punt unit is out. And West Warford will get one more chance, perhaps, to return something here. Morgan State out of timeouts. Bring the big rush and it's blocked. And that'll be a touchdown. The punt blocked. Is that Bailey? It is. How about that? They put some speed on the edge on punt team. Punt block. And he comes up with it. Holy smokes. Well, you put your best people out in desperate situations. This is a desperate situation. And so Morgan State, let's see if they go. Might as well go for two here while you're hot. I mean, they just put the speed out there. Nice job leaving his feet. Oh, look, he kept his balance, too. Yeah. And he just ends up with the football. So he gets to the end zone. We, we thought he might get there one way or the other. Did not think he would be this way. So they're going to go for two. Well, this got really interesting. We're going to get a whistle. Timeout taken by Bethune Cookman. The odds still very much favor Bethune winning this game, but. A little spark, and, and, you know, I'm happy for a guy like Bailey who, you know, is trying to make it to the NFL and showing that he can play special teams and only going to help his cause. That was yep. a great play on special teams and some of that fight not giving up. Yeah, Bailey listed at 6'1", 195 out of Capitol Heights, Maryland. Looks terrific, and hopefully he can get an opportunity at the next level. That's the thing. You see the size, but he's got the speed. It's been that yeah. speed that's really caught on. Consider the fact he's only been playing wide receiver since 2017 means he's got upside. He should get better. Career average in 18.6 yards per catch. Today, four catches, 54 yards, so a little under so, that. But like there's we'll still hit. a little time here if, if they can convert this and get an onside kick, which are really tighten some collars around here. So they decided to end up going for the single point. And 31 to 20. And O'Shea's like, hey, I got knocked down. Where's my flag? So more than likely, we will see an attempt at an onside kick here. Well, if you're Tyrone Wheatley, opportunity to practice your onside kick to see mm -hmm. you know, if it's worked, what you have to do to tweak. We see from Morgan State, they are home Saturday against Delaware State on the road 
South Carolina State, FAMU at Norfolk State, then a couple of home games, A&T, Virginia Lynchburg outside of conference, and then they finish in D.C. against Howard. And, of course, another game you can just hop on a bus and you're there. Yeah, I mean, toughest one for them is going to be at South Carolina State. Fortunately for them, they play North Carolina A&T at home. They got a couple home games there. They can try and get that first victory for Coach Wheatley versus Delaware State. There's the onside kick. It did bounce. It did go 10 yards. It is being fought for. They're still going at it. Still no official signal yet as to who has the ball. But nobody from Morgan State is acting like they got it. And they're still going to fight now. Be careful. There goes a flag. So somebody draws it on sportsmanlike conduct there. And it could be both players. Still no signal on who had recovered the ball. There we go. Finally, it does stay with Bethune. Now we'll see about the unsportsmanlike conduct flags. Or flag. Bethune Cookman recovered the fumble after the play. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness number 32. Pulling a pi player off the pile. 15 yard penalty, first down. Oh. Then we have a look. This onside kick, I kind of thought something could happen. There wasn't contact made until about 12 yards beyond. And that's the play there. But This has been a big call this year in college football, and a big emphasis about taking people off a pile. And they're saying that Bethune did it, number 32. He didn't follow up on his mistake, but the official was right there. So 56.9 to go. And as Bethune will not take a knee. Instead, be a gain out to the 48 and a first down on a healthy carry. That's Kyle Smith, number 15. Things were probably Terry Simmons saying, Well, Tyrone Wheatley, you want to play it down to the last minute? Well, I'm gonna have my guys play to the end, bringing a third string quarterback, but we're not gonna take a knee and we'll get him some reps. And that will probably be the final play of the game on the carry by Aaron Thompson. Terry Sims walks off a winner. 4-1, and 2-0 and and oh in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Morgan State still in search of their first win that made it interesting at the end, to say the least. It was, and for Morgan, they got to learn to gel with their coach, Tyrone Wheatley. For Bethune-Cookman, many people thought would have been a little warm-up game, turned into a tough, hard-fought first half, but give them credit, the Wildcats pulled away in the second half. Final score for the final time. Bethune Cookman defeats Morgan State 31 to 20. Big day for Jimmy Robinson, who finds the end zone three times for the Wildcats. From our partner Jay Walker and our entire ESPNU crew, I'm Dave Lamont, thanking them for all their hard work and saying so long to Daytona Beach, Florida. This has been a presentation of the worldwide leader in sports, ESPN.